Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to 4 Player Podcast. This is episode 758. It is June 2nd, 2023. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, uh, joined tonight, as always, by Brad Simons. Sup? That was new. Uh, Christopher Davis. Good evening. And, as Nolan put it himself, Return of the King, Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? How are you doing, Nolan? Uh, I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Com- complain about com- uh, I can complain about plenty of things, but I won't. Okay. Anything new in your life? <laughs> uh, nothing really. Too much going on. Uh, no, no major life event changes or anything like that. Just same old, same old. Just took yeah, of course. two months off the podcast for no ap- no you reason whatsoever. You took a second wife. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I did not. Uh, but I will finally publicly bring up the fact that. Uh, I am no longer in the home uh, that for so long we recorded the podcast in. Yep. Uh, many, many great memories and events um, pre-COVID. Um, that house, uh, I'm no longer there. And uh, the thing is, I'm not 10 miles away or 20 miles away or 30 no. miles away. He moved uh, to I'm Indonesia. A, I'm I'm approximately 1,600 miles away. Damn. Uh, from my house. Well, yeah. You could still be in Texas, right? Uh, oh, oh, almost. Uh, so no, you're in a different uh, so time zone. I am in a different time zone now. Uh, Bernadette and I uh, made the big life decision to move to Delaware. Yeah. Uh, mm. And the the response I get from everyone who I tell that is Delaware. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of the reason we chose to. Um, uh, it's one of those kind of map. Exactly. A lot of people. A lot of people do. Uh, it's yeah. not a state you hear a lot I about. I feel like everyone uh, kind of vaguely has an idea of where it is, but they don't sure. really know. Yeah, th- yeah, they don't. Um, so yeah, um, and, and so Brad's Gate for Life in chat mentions he's in Maryland, which is close. Well, that's the thing. Everywhere is close in Delaware. Um, it, the, the Northeast is so much smaller than Texas. Um, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty intense. Uh, how how quickly you can get to anywhere from here. Um, I'm so, exciting though, right? Oh, for sure. We have a, a lot of adventures to now go on, um, you know, places to see, things to do. We kind of had seen everything in Texas. You can, you can only see the Alamo so often and so many times it's true. Uh, before true. you're like, yeah. you know, hey, I've kind of seen everything Texas has to offer. And being in the Northeast, there's a there's a whole lot of history. Um, there's a whole lot of things to do. Yeah. Uh, infrared infer- chat brings up Rehoboth, uh, which is a nice beach uh, in Delaware uh, that a lot of people go to. Uh, I'm not far from Philly. I'm not far from Baltimore. I'm not far from DC or New York City. Um, so definitely going to be exploring a whole lot and seeing a whole lot. Oh, um, no. you just, mm-hmm. Brad had a perfect opportunity to to say New York City, the New York City, the New York mm-hmm. City, and he missed it. You're, you're true. You're true. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that that that's that's why I've been gone for so long. It was a very long process. Um, uh, we mm-hmm. we actually built a home here. Um, and so the process of packing up our current house and coming, you know, flying back and forth between chopping uh, down the trees, using yeah, the ultra yeah. hand, <laughs> right. Uh, nice. going back and forth between, uh, and then, um, uh, you know, packing. Uh, and so I just honestly, uh, from the last time I was on a podcast until now, I've played all of almost no games. Um, I did not really start playing games again until, uh, Zelda came out. And that's um, totally so, understandable. So, so just yeah. out of curiosity, I know we're going to talk about it later because I definitely, when we get to the second segment, I want to hear, you know, more. we've talked about Zelda here quite a bit, so I want to hear mm-hmm. your thoughts on Zelda. So we'll probably start For with sure. you when we get there. But just out of curiosity, how much have you managed to play of Zelda? Just, so, I know it's kind of hard. I have no it. idea. Um, I, it's one of those things. I've not done a single temple. Um, I've... I, I I can in between, when we take a break I can look up my switch and see how many hours it says I've played. I feel like I've done a lot and I feel like I've done nothing. 
I'm but, um, I'm still in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we'll definitely catch up with you in regards to Zelda in that second segment. But before we jump into the uh, fantasy critic update and stuff, I do. You said you wanted to get some thoughts in about the PlayStation Showcase because you weren't sure. on the show last time when we talked about yeah. that. So let's start there. So the, uh, there was a there was a big hubbub. Uh, when I tried to move into my home in which all of my stuff got delayed by like four or five days. Um, so I was here during the uh, uh, event, uh, but all I had in my house was two chairs. Um, and I was sitting at my island when like, what do you and, do like, in that situation? Not a whole lot. Uh, I, I slept on an air mattress um, and uh, for, you know, and then whatever. But anyway, so I was sitting out that island uh, when the, uh, event happened so i did get to watch it um i did have a, a, a few thoughts here and there on some of the stuff that i gotta bring third up third party showcase yeah uh, so and so that is one thing so first off talus principle two very excited about that um uh whatever it's called uh metal gear solid delta mm-hmm. um i am immensely excited for that i know it's one of those things where some people are like oh they're over it and blah 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 whatever you know metal gear solid three uh, at the time was probably one of my right? Yeah, it was one of my favorite games of all time when it came out. I played it relentlessly. Uh, when Subsistence came out, I played that relentlessly. It's one of those things where I I was probably one of the earliest streamers in existence in that uh, Bernadette and I were dating long distance at the time, and I had a webcam that I would point at my TV, and I would stream Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, to her. Um, uh, over. It was either over MSN Great. or AIM. Uh, yeah, oh right. Uh, yes, I, I'm telling you, dude, this was like 2000, like six, uh, maybe 2005, 2006, um, when I would stream uh, me playing <laughs> the game to her. 160p video, dude, probably, probably um, when 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 Snake put on that camo, you could not see him <laughs> because he became all of four pixels. Um, but yeah, pixels. So, so it was it was uh, one of my favorite games of all time. So when I saw that announcement. I was beyond hype. I am very much ready for that. Uh, I, I love Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm very excited that they're bringing back all the original voice cast um, to, to uh, reprise the, the, the weird roles. thing. And I think news is we, reusing. Oh? Yeah, they're, okay. they're reusing that audio. Like, I'm yeah. guessing they're probably going to like, uh, what do you call it? Like remaster the audio, but I'm, it's going to yeah. be the same, which is, you know, still fine. I'm I'm still OK with it then. And yes, Dark Dark Matter Pixels and Chat brings up a, a good point. Our f- favorite theme song. And it was just as soon as as soon as that trailer, you hear the dun dun dun. It's just fucking just swells of emotion in me. Uh, so v- nice. very much excited for it. Um, so the other the other uh, the big stuff that I, I was pretty hyped for Final Fantasy 16 uh, looks good. Very excited for that. Uh, I don't that game better know. not fuck me. <laughs> All right. I don't know how I care about Assassin's Creed Mirage. We'll see. Um, but I, I, I did enjoy what I saw about uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2. I, I like that gameplay. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how Venom works. And then the one thing I just heard maybe today or yesterday uh, was like the map is twice as big as the last yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. The first game was yeah. a pretty big map. They said um, they had Brooklyn and yeah. um, Manhattan. Was it Brooklyn and Manhattan? Uh, yeah. You've always I had Manhattan. Right. It's, it's Brooklyn and Queens. Brooklyn Queens. and Queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, that didn't sound right. So I, I was sitting here thinking, like, that doubles the size of the map. Maybe I'm just, like, not intimately familiar with, like, the, like, New York City's actual, like, landmass mm-hmm. and, like, layout. It's, it's I was pretty like, big. I was like, that doubles the size of the map. Interesting. I had no idea. But yeah, that's that's pretty big news for sure. But you can basically so, fly now, so I guess that won't be yeah, an issue. Right. Yeah, so yeah, because the, the other thing... because Queens is so much lower to the ground um, that like the the wingsuit. I did we didn't talk about that at all when we were actually talking mm-hmm. to showcase, but that wingsuit looks fucking sick. I'm sure. I'm super excited for that. Um, but the other thing I wanted to bring up was um, not just in our. Uh, discord where people were chatting about it and I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch the podcast but even you know conversations i've seen on the internet people were kind of down on the event and i just mm-hmm. I, I wasn't personally i really enjoyed what i saw and i just don't know what people expect anymore I th- like if you I, always have to go 15 times further than the previous event like there's no where are you gonna go man there's no well, way to I, fucking go i will say this i think th- i think the only reason that because i there is a distinction to be made because 
I think a lot of the disappointments simply comes from the fact that they were it, this was supposed to be the first party showcase, which means mm -hmm. we were going to see that, you know, the next big first party Sony project. Right. So like the Ghost of Tsushima is the the last of us, you know, like those kinds of things. And we didn't get that. Like we saw more Spider-Man, which is great. But like beyond, oh. beyond Spider-Man, we don't really know. There, what else there were Sony two had. other first so party titles. That, like, that was it. It's not like a doom saying thing, like kind of what Microsoft has been like for years and years and years. Like, I think people know that stuff is coming. It's that what seemed like replaced it was a lot of new games as a service stuff. And we've heard like Sony kind of saying that they're going to be getting into this stuff. And now we're well, kind of they didn't just kind of say that they... quote unquote fruits of their labors. Mm -hmm. And people are just kind of like, I don't know if I want all this shit. There was a lot of trailers for service <laughs> games. And oh, we're you know, talk people about aren't going to warm up to that immediately. That It'll never work that way. One of them might blow up, and I get it. That's probably what they're looking for. But th that first impression is never going to be like, you know, op welcoming being, with open Seeing arms, Ghost of Tsushima know? for the first time, you know what I mean? Like, it's never going to be that. Yeah, no, but, it'll um, never be like that. But yeah. we're going to talk about that specifically in, in the sense, because we're going to talk about the Last of Us um, factions or multiplayer mm -hmm. kind of developments tonight, um, which ties very much, very much ties into Sony's their their quotes about wanting to go i think the quote was something i uh, forgive me i don't have it directly in front of me but their quote from a, like a year or two ago was like they want to have like 60 percent of their of their first party lineup be games as a service games by 2026 or something like that yeah um and it doesn't sound like it's going very well yes yeah. which you know could be a good thing for, to some it's you know not a good thing by Sony, by Sony standards for sure. But we'll yeah. talk about that tonight. So, so but yeah, I so think Nick, most of the disappointment Nick, stemmed from the first party, the third party kind of overshadowing the first party stuff, but there was definitely a lot of stuff to be excited for. Can I very, there. can I very briefly, like a minute, clarify my dragon's dogma thing from last oh, week? Yeah, I didn't people, get to bring up dragon's dogma. Yeah. Very hyped people, for that. People too. seem to think I was very down on it. And I just want to say, I, I thought a lot about it just because it's dragon's dogma. And I love dragon's dogma. And I think a lot about it. Um, when that first game came out, it was like this really cool and exciting game, but it was really rough around the edges. It was awkward and weird in a lot of ways. And the thing that you always thought about Dragon's Dogma when playing it was honestly the potential and the potential for the sequel. They have so many good ideas here. So many things are so cool, but it's rough and it's weird. And like, I can't wait to see what the next one is like. And we're finally getting the next one. And it's a decade later in our minds. I feel like that game has been building to be maybe something that is like dragon's dogma, but is like the dream version of dragon's dogma. We were always seeing in our heads when we played that first game. So when we see that first trailer and the story and the character and like the models and the, and the dialogue and, and you know, the combat and stuff, everything looks so dragon's dogma. It's almost like this disconnect, like, okay, it can't just be more dragon's dogma. I've had this dream version of dragon's dogma in my head, like for so long. And this just seems like, more of it and i still think the potential is there for it to be that dream version but i thought of like an analogy of another game and the one i thought of was was um state of decay 2 which was in development for a long time but i had some of the same those same thoughts when i was playing the first state of decay of like there's so many like awesome awesome ideas here and it's r rough around the edges and i can't wait to see what the sequel's like and they worked on the sequel for a long time and i think even maybe microsoft was sort of like backing them a little bit at that point maybe publishing and we sort of when that when it when they showed it i was expecting to see oh it's going to be like this expanded polished version it's going to be they're going to take the core of what worked in that first game and it's going to like be this great new sequel and honestly it just seemed like oh well it's it's just another state of decay and it's still rough around the edges it's still kind of buggy it still has a lot of those really good ideas right. but i don't know i was kind of expecting more and that's sort of the first thought that popped into my head when i saw dragon's dogma after 10 years right so, sure I'm i will say this it, it was a different capcom yeah. back in the day when they made um uh, sure, uh of dragon's course. Dogma. This is a different engine too yeah i mean yeah they're, they're working with resident evil or the sorry re engine uh you know which they've been using for, for so many games and almost all of those games that they've made with re engine have been you know absolute bangers that engine seems to be really working for them yeah yeah so, so, otherwise i'm sure it's going to be great but uh, yeah. But yeah, that's all I want to say. It, it, it's more just 
the dream game in my head didn't match up with that trailer that we saw. Right. And you know, uh, it was nice I to actually understand. see it in motion and kind of feel more like it. Okay. This is, this is a thing. It's, it's real. Like it's not just like a logo on a screen that they showed us anymore. Like mm-hmm. they've been putting in the work. So that's, sure, that's still pretty yeah. exciting. And it doesn't um, feel like a game that's, three or four years out which is great right we've also seen yeah. beyond good and evil 2 before nick so. <laughs> that's that's fucking true okay um real quick a little bit of housekeeping mostly final fan, uh, uh, fantasy critic stuff um but there of course i want to remind everybody so we are still playing final fantasy 6 for the revival club i want to i, I want to just let everybody know that i am still playing i played a little bit today um mostly out of necessity because i got screwed at <laughs> <laughs> on my steam deck couldn't play system shock so i was like well i guess it's n- now is a good time as any to, p- to jump back into final fantasy 6 um but we're still playing it I'm, i have every intention of finishing it so if you're interested in playing along uh you can subscribe to us on twitch you can support us on patreon and that'll get you access to the final fantasy 6 channel in discord i know slop dog finished the game recently so i'm a little behind yes. um but i'm still very excited to keep going with that um so that's happening and of course as i've been saying the past few weeks uh as i should be doing every week uh if you like our show if you listen to our show help us out by going leaving us a review whether it's a you know a star rating or an actual written review somewhere uh wherever it is you get your podcast if they allow you to leave us a review we'd really really appreciate it and it helps us out with the rankings and and making us more visible so we'd appreciate that um but anyways down to business down to the real brass tacks of why we're here uh because this is of course a fantasy critic podcast first and foremost uh nowadays so nolan we've already What's talked up, briefly man? about your <laughs> tell us about your overperforming zelda game <laughs> I, I don't think it's overperforming at all no well, no it's, it's come down it's, it's, it came down a point so it's at what like a 96 now which was the total of 26 yeah, points now. i uh, was expecting 95 tops well, 97 you know, is a little scary. You're not the be you're not the be all end all, Brad. So, uh, but of course, like I said, we'll talk about Zelda later. Um, you feel but, proud of yourself? What you've no, done? Are to you us? asking Nolan? Yes. Do I feel proud of myself? Yes. Well, I mean, I I did what I had to do um, to <laughs> to play in this league. You know, it's one of those things that you know people are like, ah, oh, why'd you choose Zelda? If I hadn't, someone else would have. Uh, turning yeah, Brad into you, a nervous would have been wreck. Me, yeah, I was second. The, the, the question is, if if Chris Davis, if you were first, did I ask you this? If you were first, would you have picked Zelda? Really? Fucking course I would have. Yeah, okay, everyone okay. would have. I just, I have to hear you say. I don't know. Chris okay. Davis, I, I, the only reason I think we doubt you is because you have demonstrated a few times already that like... Interesting order. You, t- you, 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 your brain just works differently than the rest of ours in terms of like <laughs> playing fantasy critic, <laughs> which is not an insult. It's just like, yes, you know, different. Mor- Mortal Com- unannounced Mortal Kombat game is your third choice. You know, that's, uh, which, you know, obviously paid off for you, but... Well, who the fuck saw that it would have paid off if he spent a dollar on it you know an hour after the draft but exactly besides the point exactly but you know i think the important thing is here we're all learning <laughs> we're all learning and now it's just yeah. a race to second place uh just kidding we're not giving up we're not giving up nolan um, no it's 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 i'm still in it know. to win it i don't know if i can beat yeah. nolan but i'm still in it to win it i'm what gonna try the, well I don't know about you, Nick, but some of us may oh, be. No, you. I'm just kidding. You're fine. You're fine. Well, no, you're, no, not, I, you're not doing fine. I just, let's just be honest. I am the underdog here. Yes. I have definitely I have the most potential right to. Now. I'm the I'm the I'm I'm the potential rubber band here. That if can you suddenly... win this thing, I feel like we should all double our our. We should just <laughs> double the pot. You know that actually would really make stay, make it really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god wouldn't that be an amazing finale if i if i would be I, if super I impressed you know, if, you could, if, you could, if you could win the whole thing i am i am thinking every day about this and trying to be strategic i know everybody i know everybody thinks i'm i'm fucked but i still see a, i still see a path forward here your if final fantasy are strong if final fantasy 16 fucks me though I'm it's done. not gonna fuck I'm, you. It's not gonna fuck you. It's, it's but I mean, it could be good, like right? an 82 hey, or whatever, might, which it, is disappointing. I mean, that's your top pick. It, it might fuck you a little uh, if if the news is anything to say. So no, sh- I don't know. Sh- what does that mean? No, this is this is Chris Davis's word on the street thing again. No, no, this is me r- reporting news. What's he saying? I don't know. Evidently, Square is getting really worried about uh, 16's pre-order numbers. Oh, that's. Uh, oh, I heard something about that. Okay. okay. Who, what does that have to do with the quality of the game? Yeah. <laughs> like nothing. Absolutely it, nothing. It's... Let me get to it. Let me get to it because okay. 
I want to get to the actual fantasy critic updates we had this week because one, uh, Brad's game that he has been kind of waiting to chart, uh, Fuga Melodies of Steel two finally charted God. and it pulled him in fourteen points. <laughs> Let me tell you, between yeah. that and War Tales, I don't know if I'm going to be bidding on games smaller games. It's too nerve wracking. It's fucking mm. stressful. Um, but yesterday, or I guess maybe earlier in the week was uh. Crispy's big day, right? The the big day he, that like easily the biggest day he's gonna have all year long because he we had talked about his big day last week. Oh wait, no, he no, didn't no, have no. scores we, I mean, last week. Okay, yeah, he didn't have scores. scores. Now we have scores. He had Diablo Four, Street Fighter Six, and System Shock, all of which, which pulled disappointed. Points. System Shock disappointed a little bit. I feel like he'd be in much better shape if that had kind of ended up where. I feel like maybe best case for that was eighty five, right? But maybe, yeah. It, I'm gonna yeah, talk about System Shock tonight. 76. Um, 76, so he pulled in six points there. Street Fighter 6 is a 92, so that pulled in 24 points. 23, right? actually, for whatever. I guess they round down. Hey, I'm sure they up. round, and you just can't see it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. my Resident Evil 4 is at 92, and I got 24 points. Yeah, no, I just it's realized, just, yeah, it's I just, just realized really I did math really bad in my head a few minutes ago. Yeah. Nolan's Zelda is what? It's 96, so that pulled in... Oh, it's like 32 points, isn't it? Yeah, 32. 32. Fuck, yeah. I don't know why. I it, was, it was 34 points because when it was at 97, just because the mm-hmm. double points, which that's the killer. That's the thing mm-hmm. that's so crazy is the double points. I feel like they shouldn't do double points. No, that's what I, 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 think, I think you can turn that off. I think you can turn that off. <laughs> no. I'm saying for like next, no, season, dude. next season. No, next dude, season. I don't even that, want to do it next season. That, that makes shit exciting. No, like Crispy, okay, no, so, so Crispy's, Di- Crispy had Diablo 4, right? It's teetering. On a ninety, it went from ninety to ninety one, and then back no, down to an eighty nine. No, it went 89. from a ninety to an eighty nine. I, I, it was ninety one for a second, and then yeah. ninety, and then going 89. up and down when you're in the nineties is, is it scary, makes shit right? exciting. You're losing two points, but I mean, what are two points in this? The game? point is, Crispy brought oh. in basically nineteen, twenty four, and six, so he brought in a really good, sizable chunk of points. Although so I gotta say though, for Crispy, like those are his big. I mean. Those were his two big dogs. Armored Core, so, baby. Uh, Armored Forza's Core. Gonna, Fucking stop it. Forza's Don't drink gonna the Crispy Coo. It's going to score like an 86. Forza. But you it's think- not like a Horizon game, so it's not going to be too nutty. I'm saying I yeah. still think 6 and 4 in, in Diablo 4 were his like big games, and now, I mean, he could and talk they delivered. Up, arm, he can t- talk up Armored Core, but it's not. God, you know, it's not going to be uh, so. So I, y- y'all probably didn't hear it. And he did pin pin these things. I, I said that I think there were some jokes about it scoring at 95. I told him I would give him Baldur's Gate three for free if it hits 95 armor core. <laughs> I, if, if armor core hits a 95, I'll just give him Baldur's Gate three for free and fantasy critic. And if it hits 90, I would give him twenty dollars if, if, if it goes. Yeah, if it, if it hits 90. That's twenty dollars. If, if it budget. settles at a ninety, I'll pay half his his pot entry. So or no, that's what is our pot entry? It's fifty. I, think, right? I, thought, 50 I thought you were just saying you were going to give him twenty dollars of your budget. Well, so no, twenty dollars cash. I'll give him twenty dollars cash. Oh, yeah, he ain't getting any cash of money, budget. real life money. Armor Core is not hitting. <laughs> 90 well, or the, the, the next know, 10 we, days or two this is what we thought about that. mortal Kombat, and god no, I would we did this. not think about that about mortal Kombat. we're talking about scores now and no armor core game i know i know i just thinking, lived in the 60s and 70s its entire life is suddenly going to be a 90 i'm just they showed saying, a trailer I'm, it's just i'm just armor saying core. I'm just saying, uh, one of the things I think we as a podcast have been blessed with over the years is the ability for just the most unexpected random shit to happen it ain't for, to the, for, for the benefit of our viewers. Like the, like the time when they announced a new 2D Metroid game and then you got excited and then they said, uh, uh, um, yeah. what's, no, you call no, it? I, what's the name of the studio? Man, I get and, you. Uh, but we like have that, Souls games from From Software in the 80s. Armor Core is not going to hit 90. He's out of his fucking mind. I'm just saying, it, it could happen. All right. Um, <laughs> and and we have one pickup, because last week we talked about there was a bid for the Talos Principle 2. That was me, baby. It's on my list. That's true. Um, and just FYI, this is this is kind of news, news-ish. This is, I guess, a headline, because we're going to fade into the news here in a second. But, like, uh, there's been a few interesting developments. For a second, for a hot second, I thought... Um, I thought... Uh, the developers of uh, Stalker 2 were announcing the delay, but GSC it ended up being 
yeah, it ended up being an announcement. They were a statement about uh, they were hacked uh, and to avoid spoilers on the Internet because there's stuff out there or whatever. So like that, I didn't quite get the delay I was hoping for. Specifically, I'm hoping for a delay or a confirmation of a release date this year on all these things. And also the uh, Square Enix has released a statement today saying that de development on Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two or whatever it's called, Rebirth, is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, yeah. is going smoothly, and they are currently trying to, quote-unquote, nail down a release date, um, which sounds like maybe we'll have information about that. The, the, as, the last thing we heard about that was that it was coming out winter 2023, so sooner rather than later, I think we'll have a release date or release window, and it's either going to slip, and I can delay it, or it's going to be confirmed for well, winter, they, and that'll be exciting one They never go. specifically said winter 2023. They said next winter. Next, next winter, you're right, which was yeah. in 2022, so... And, and if they're coming yes. out with a statement saying, uh, we're working on nailing down the release date now, that means that's not a 2023 game. I mean... It, There's no that's way. Not, that's not necessarily what that means. It means they're, they're trying announcing to this date. on June 2nd. Like there's so? there's seven months left in the year and they're announcing it. The fact that they're looking at a release date now. Well, yeah, of that, course, that's, that's what they're trying. They're they're wait. They're seeing how they're they're looking at the landscape and trying to make a smart decision about when to release their game. That's what that's what publishers do. They don't usually make smart decisions about when to release their games, but that's what they do. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm not I don't have a lot of faith that it'll come out this year, but I, I picked it up for like, yeah, three or four a, bucks. It was, or whatever. Smart, it was a smart pickup. And uh, and if they do happen to release it, and here's my argument for why I think it could still release this year, is that after Final Fantasy 16, they've got a whole lot of nothing on the release docket. And I was sitting here thinking, if they already have something big that they're that they're betting on for 2024, I could see them trying to release this in 2023 to fill the back half of the year. And then I and then it hit me, Kingdom Hearts 4 is coming out next year. So like they do have yeah, big stuff next year. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't drafting Kingdom Hearts for I don't know about y'all. Uh -uh. Next year, <sighs> nope. Uh, I'm just saying, Kingdom Hearts Four is going to be whether you like it or not is going to be a huge release for Square Enix. So and that and that is slated for next year. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, anyways, let's get to it. There's some headlines this week I want to talk about. Um, I want to start with the actually the Last of Us multiplayer development because another reason why that showcase was disappointing to a lot of people was because I think a lot of people were really banking on this is where we finally see factions or whatever this Last of Us multiplayer uh, thing. This felt called. like it was and the moment. This felt like the, the right time. It was almost. You know, it might certain. have been. The, it might have been the moment. I, I feel like uh, one of, one yeah, one of you know, have. like the common leakers or whatever who knows a lot about stuff. You know, one of these Andrews guys, whatever, whatever is, mm -hmm. whoever it was, I can't remember. But they That's were cool. saying like they they expect they knew about the Sony stuff that they really did expect to see there, but got pulled. It looks like so it could be a reason why the showcase felt a little uneven from like bigger games versus some of these newer smaller games that were right. really just I could have seen and something. it could have been something like a last of us I, I could have seen that being like the game that opens the show and, yeah there is no doubt that spider-man 2 was always going to be the, the what they closed with on this thing but i could have i could have easily seen them opening the show with showing off factions mm -hmm. um but there's a lot of a lot of interest so they naughty dog released a statement after the event um, saying that we understand y'all are disappointed that you know it wasn't that we didn't show up, but upon we're reviewing the game, we're still working on it. They, but the big thing here is that their statement basically said that they're, they scaled back the size of the team, they're refocusing, reassessing, and and it needs more time, right? Which is essentially mm. a, a way of saying a delay. We, and there's I a lot more. See more of this. I think I think this has something to do with Redfall. Okay, I think it, it could. It could. Publishers are scared now. So. And they might have had some, you know, a whole trailer ready to go that featured could. some microtransaction y I, There's more to wait, real quick. Let me, get, stuff. let me get this out because there's a, there's a lot more to this story than, uh, and, and I do want to credit because I can open doors. Uh, well, I did, I do want to throw credit out too because I, I, I got a lot of this information by listening to Kind of Funny this week. Uh, and there's also Jeff Grubb came into this and, and had bits and pieces of the news that kind of like together, you could kind of piece everything together, right? So the statement that Naughty Dog released um, seemed like it was a reaction to the showcase, right? But in, but Jason Schreier ended up post doing an article in Bloomberg that was talking about the, st the state, the uh, sources close to the project, talking about the state of, state of the game. 
um, and Naughty Dog's approach to it and brought Bungie into this, which I thought was interesting because post Sony acquisition, Bungie's role at Sony has kind of been like the enforcer, like going around and reviewing and, and, and looking at all of these games as a service games and critiquing them. And like, they, they are the point guards for looking at all these, all 15, I believe it was games as a service projects that are 12, in development yeah, yeah. to, to uh, review them and green light further funding, depending on, Interesting, how they're looking it's, it's it's more or less them saying bungie knows their is shit bun- because is, they made destiny so like we're gonna are let they them... a good enforcer i feel like well, the only one they made the destiny. Only... They, they make des they make destiny you know whether but, but i feel not... like a lot of the servicey parts have just pissed people off you know yes but like but admittedly there's, no... there's some really cool stuff about destiny but i feel like the only no one you really want to hire for it. consulting is epic games Bungie is, mm. but after Epic Games with Fortnite, but I I, I do think Fortnite and I, I know there's a lot of similarities there, but I I do think Fortnite and Destiny are still very very different games, even if they are they are kind of at their core, yeah. sharing. Uh, like, re- you know, remember that Fortnite, service, right? re- Fortnite is a pivot of an original concept. They completely rebooted that because they put out a battle royale mode that people really liked. And so they pivoted so, the entire company around it. But Destiny is game a game project that was built from the ground up with games as a service in mind. And Bungie is also, I think Bungie's approach to games as a service is way more in line with the kind of project Sony wants, right? The, well, the Sony I wants to make Sony first party wants... games as a service thing. I think they want it to resemble Destiny more than they want it to resemble Fortnite. Hmm. But the... I mean, no, I'm I'm serious here. Like, they're talking a lot about wanting to do these big games as a service games, but but Sony first party has been so synonymous with these like huge budget cinematic narrative driven experiences that sounds way closer to Destiny than it does to Fortnite. So it makes sense. And and it, it you know they weren't going to go out and buy Epic. They bought they bought Bungie, and this was this is kind of the first thing that that, that they've put them on, right? So. Apparently, uh, that review of The Last of Us Factions didn't go as planned, uh, didn't go very well. And a lot of and Jeff Grubb came in and was, it was basically saying what he's hearing from people who have seen the project is that a lot of like looking at this, it looks like you're it feels like you're looking at like some smaller studios first attempt at a games as a service game, which is not what they want. Like they want they want a surefire big budget like hit right out of the gate. And I think Naughty Dog was, I mean, you kind of have certain expectations with Naughty Dog, right? So, like, I see hearing that, you know, maybe it needs focus and attention and maybe a pivot um, is not super encouraging. Um, and also hearing them say they're scaling back the team, which I guess is an effort to, like, f- refocus the project, also kind of makes me wonder if this is... That's a weird this... thing to throw I mean, So here's my, here's my two cents on that, Nick. Mm-hmm. I would like to say that I know a little something about factions. Mm -hmm. Uh, You do probably played more of it than everyone else here combined. Absolutely. In my opinion, I would rather have no factions come out than a bad factions. So now that this current state of it has been reviewed and it's been found lacking, I appreciate the fact that they are acknowledging that and saying, Mm -hmm. Hey, look, we went in the direction, you know, obviously I don't want to say, I don't want to say anything negative necessarily because I don't know. I'm not there. Um, obviously, you know, Druckmann is a little spread out at the moment doing yes. other things. <laughs> That's what I, I, I don't, sure. I, I don't know the exact status of the studio, who's in charge, blah, 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 whatnot. Um, and, and to zero sky's point, and he, he says, why can't they just release the OG faction with better graphics? I don't think that would do well. Don't get me wrong. I think a lot of people would play it, um, but I, I think that it would in, in in 2023. It would not be successful. I think there would be a large amount of people, myself included, who love the original factions that would probably go and play it. But then I think it would fall off quickly. I understand the whole concept of, you know, games as a service, you know, something that drives you. Uh, to want to keep playing, to log in daily to achieve something. Well, I really enjoyed the original game. Eventually, there wasn't really all that much to work for, I guess. Right. Like, you kind of just ran out of reasons to play it. Besides the fact that it was really fucking fun. 
And the only reason I stopped playing it was just because everyone else kind of eventually moved on to other things. Yeah. So I understand the 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 point or the the logic, the thought behind, hey, if we add some sort of service element to this, we can drive more players to play it and keep them playing it. And, you know, it's all 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 metrics. What was that? Uh, what was the Let It Die uh, sequel game? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I forgot uh, about that. Death first. No, yeah. Death first. Yeah, there you go. Death first. It's one of those things where that game had a little bit of promise, but I think anyone who would have played that, it, you know, a week before it came out would have been like, no, this is not at all ready. Like, why are yeah. we going to launch yeah. this? And I think that's what's happening here and that there might be a good base for a great game, but they're like, hey, we do need to hold ourselves to a higher standard and where it currently is, is not ready. Let's roll it back. So, so, yeah. so, so, so the, the, the one, the one thing that, that sort of has me thinking like what the scaling back actually is, is the loss of people on the team. I mm-hmm. feel like that suggests like a major component of it no longer being in the game. And honestly, the way they've been talking about it and presented it, especially most recently, not, counting very recently was that there was still going to be like a large like story element or maybe even a story mode related to factions i could see them deciding you know what let's actually let's actually kill that aspect of it and keep it a straight i I could also see them saying that hey that part's actually good take all the people who were working on that and move them somewhere else and take this other part that's broken and spend more time on that. You, you could always make that argument too, that, you know, well, they no, need no, less you can make it, but some... that's like, that's the worst case scenario. We don't want them to get rid of, we don't want them to make this solely like a more narrative thing. Well, we want it to be I, factors, I do think right? it's, a, I, I do think right out of the gate when they first announced this and they were talking about how they wanted it to have a, a narrative component to it. You know what I think they were using as kind of like their, the inspiration that I think maybe got them excited that made them kind of, I don't know if this made them go off the rails or whatever a little bit, but like, I think they were using kind of like the division as kind of like, mm-hmm. a, like a, like a, a template, not a template. Very successful you know, game. Very yeah. successful game, very story focused and a, a, a very interesting. I, I think that, that kind of game would be a great fit for something like the last of us. So I think they kind of wanted to do that. Um, but you also got to take into consideration that especially now post HBO's show, um, the last of us is, is a very, very important brand, you know? So like, if there's any doubt in their mind that, that if there's any thought that this game would come out and maybe damage or tarnish that brand, they're going to think twice about it or they're going to reevaluate it or whatever. Also, I I found it interesting in that statement they released they they just kind of like casually dropped in a line about we're splitting the team back we're splitting they were reducing the size of the team and sh- moving people around and we're also we're, we're also working on a a new single player adventure or whatever right very casually saying like hey don't forget the thing that we're we are really that you know we're really really good at we are still making yeah you yeah know. but 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 that's because we're we're living in a fall post fallout 76 world and they don't right. want people ever thinking that this multiplayer yeah. thing that's coming out that might be a little rocky is what the friend i mean look at the damage it did to bethesda game studios and the fallout brand it was yeah look, look what redfall is doing to arcane and microsoft like well, it's we don't even know about that yet it, yeah. it could be bad but i'm saying like like serious reputation was hurt with fallout 76 i do, I do, I do so think i think you're gonna see naughty dog constantly reminding people of don't worry the next la- proper last of us is coming don't worry don't worry. I, I do think um I don't even think they were necessarily referring to like the last of us part three. I think they were just saying we are working on I a single player. I wouldn't be surprised game. if it was DLC for last of us Two, like an Could expansion, be. you know, somebody um, left behind or something like that. But, you know, I, I guess what I, I, what I, there is, I think there is potential to make really good games as a service games. I think there are, but like the fact that this industry seems so hell bent on, on making that, the focus and like the future of gaming is kind of driving me fucking crazy, man. Like we see time and time and time again, that these things like more of way more of them fail than succeed. But I guess technically all you really need is one good one. It's, it's this little thing. It's this tiny, it's this tiny little thing called Called money. Capitalism. Yeah. And money. And it doesn't matter. Like you said, 30 of them can fail. That doesn't matter. The amount of money they spend on those failures is a drop in the bucket compared to a success like um, 
uh, what's that one? Uh, fuck. Why am I drawing a blank on it? Apex Legends. Apex, Apex Legends. Legends. Thank I you. That's, like what, great that's what I was trying to think of. That's that's exactly what I was trying to think of, Brad. Right. That one kind of came out of nowhere, but holy shit, it blew up like fucking crazy. I understand yeah. that it's not Fortnite, but it is still making them yeah. buttloads of enough. money. EA got one, exactly. Right? And, and exactly. I, I feel like all these other publishers, they're like, we're not going to make a Fortnite, but I'm going to throw 10 games and we'll see if we can get an Apex Legends. Right? I, I, and that I makes wanna, sense. That's worth the cost, I think. I, mm-hmm. I do want to say, and, and, and I see why Sony would want to kind of chase that a little bit, right? But they're they are walking a very fine line here because Sony has built up so much goodwill over this past generation of games. Like, they are, like, whether you agree with it or not, like, goodwill Sony is like, not making well, I mean, Sony's, game store money, though. Sony's, um, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like when people think of like in people's minds, when they think of PlayStation, like they're thinking specifically of a very, like a very specific kind of game that's, that's garnered them a lot of really, really, really good will. So like, we're talking super high budget narrative, cinematic, just pristine, Polish. ex- polished experiences. And like, they're really, and I see why they would want to chase these other things. Cause it's a great way to make money, but like they are doing this with, at the, at, but at putting in danger that reputation that they have worked, they've, they've clawed their way to the top. That and reputation, they're... yes. But there's also the aspect that, so Sony put out a recent financial report talking about mm-hmm. uh, sales of the PS5 versus PS4 and things like that. Right. And what they it, want to it, do for funding was, for the next several years. It was just, it was that gif from Zombieland of, uh, what's his face? Oh my God, what is his name? uh what do you my, my brain did, woody harrelson thank you crying harrelson. and just wiping his tears with money yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what it <laughs> yeah. was well like, they don't no, care anyway sorry go on chris so uh so they were talking about the the funding they want to devote to different types of games in the next several years through 2025 2026 right and they were very specific about saying yes we are going to put 60 percent of our funding towards games as a service titles and it, we're going that's, to that's and we're going to technically spend a uh, 40% of our stuff on single player content, but that's percentage. Our overall spending as a whole is going to dramatically increase. So yeah. their expectation is that their current level of funding is going to be the model for each fiscal year for single player content. Right. So essentially by, well, the, they're skewing the, like they're, 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 they're they're funneling the money in different directions. They're they're funneling more money. So theoretically speaking, I don't think we're going to see a super noticeable dip in like these pristine first party cinematic experiences, right? But you're going to see a lot more of these games as a service games pop up. But like, I think in their head, they're like the Last of Us seemed like the obvious, like that's the one that's that's going to like. It's that's, an that's obvious choice. It's, it's an IP it they own. Easy. It is a they they it's have the, dog. They, it's Naughty Dog, and it's a formula that they've tried and tested through the original Last of Us that worked real well. But it so it makes sense right? to actually just convert that up was, into a, a big game. Factions I mean, was great, but it didn't set the world on fire, right? So no, right. it did. So like saying that that Factions Two is going to be like the safest bet for like a games as a service blow up is not. I mean, no, well, I, I what, think, what else I do you have to base the, off the, off of the Sony Sony back catalog then? But it could be any of these other random ones that were at their fucking showcase. No one no. knows until this shit is out, and all of a sudden you realize, oh wait, there are like way when I, more when people say care about this game than you realize. When I say it's the obvious choice, I really think it just came down to like for a, for a, a, a good chunk of time. It was. It seemed like Naughty Dog could do no wrong, just in terms of like they were pumping out like Uncharted and The Last of Us, and just like all these things were just like popping off, right? And it seems like okay, let's let them like lead the way on developing this like really ambitious, big budget games as a service game based in a, in one of the biggest franchises in the world right now, especially with the HBO show and everything. It seems like a no fucking brainer. So to hear Bungie come and say, "Oh, this needs some work," like this is not really going going well i mean okay probably first of all i think we're blowing the uh, it needs some work i mean that's still speculation to some extent it is it is speculation but them set like scaling back the size of the team is pretty it's pretty telling i mean it's maybe i mean 
that's the scariest part because you never see a developer or a publisher saying we're scaling back on the team size. That's never yeah. like a direction. You n- you never hear a publisher say and, and, unless like the project is nearing completion and they don't need that many people anymore. You but know what I mean? Like, yeah. But and that's yeah. not. That's definitely not that. Um, so I don't know when we're gonna hear more about this or see more about this, but. You know, it, it, it kind of bummed me out because, you know, I'm not a big games as a service player. I'm not a really big multiplayer person, but I am a big Last of Us person. And if there was any game that was going to make me excited about playing this kind of game, I think it was this Last of Us game. So to hear that it's that it's maybe not it's kind of rocky right now has me a little worried. Um, but I, I hope that I hope they manage to turn it around and, and do something interesting with it. So we'll we'll see what happens Look, with that. In four years, we're going to be laughing that we ignored marathon or something and that no i mean shooters yeah, i still haven't watched that trailer i keep forgetting See, to watch you haven't seen it you watch that trailer and you would just immediately start jerking off until you realized it was a it is it is a clone. gorgeous trailer it tells you I, nothing you know, but it's gorgeous. i know but the, the funny thing is i hear everybody talking about tarkov tarkov this tarkov that right i don't even know what the fuck tarkov is like that's yeah, of how, course you that's don't. how it, it, it's fair but it's very it, successful that's what i'm talking about it is there's always going to be these really big successful communities that don't those Circles don't cross with yours, and that's fine. No, but they're right. enormous. Sony's looking for those, not the right. kind that you want, right? So the fact that you see all these like trailers and you're like, "What is all this shit?" It, they don't care about what. But you like, think. I think you're, I think you're assuming that I just chose not to watch that marathon trailer. It was just a situation where I was watching the showcase. Somebody distracted me because I was at work. Uh, and yeah, I, forget, yeah. I missed it, and then I, I keep forgetting to go back and watch it. Um, watch it. and I have, I have every intention. Really good of art. It. I know, and that's. I'm sure it'll. It'll. I'm sure I'll be like you said. I'll be jerking off all over the place. But. Also, I, I just want to mention really quick before we move on because we do need to move on. In that mm-hmm. we saw two other first party Sony games as a service titles announced at their show, and none of them were as memorable or as interesting. yeah, exactly. About like last week. they they opened up with Fair Games, which is Haven Studio, which is Jade Raymond's joint, which is owned and uh, was purchased by Sony last year. That is a games as a service title. We and then all, last week we that opened the show uh and then they towards the end of the show they uh, had a very brief teaser trailer for concord which is from firewalk which is also a sony studio and is expected to be a pvp multiplayer fps i don't think well, either one of those games are going to set the world on fire i'm not i'm know. not saying they are i'm just saying that we're we have three projects that we know of that are games of service and right. we saw two of them last week yes we saw more right. so let's move on um i don't i don't think we're gonna have as much to say about this next topic but i wanted to bring it up because um it is related to one of the other more the other big um industry stories over the past year or so which was obviously konami's resurgence and um re rebooting of the silent hill franchise one of the games that was announced when they when they revealed all these new silent hill projects was Silent Hill Ascension. And by far, out of all the ones that they showed during that that big Silent Hill um, presentation they did last year, this was the one that I was maybe the least interested in. Um, and that's because it's not really a video game, per se, not in the traditional sense, I guess. It's an... And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there was a new trailer this week, and they're starting to talk more about it. We have more details about it, which I think are <laughs> interesting, to say the least. Um, and I'm seeing like very varied reactions to this across the board. And I, and again, I don't know how I feel about this, but this thing, Silent Hill Ascension, is a CG series that is going to be streamed daily, daily with audience, the audience dictating the direction of the story. So audience voting, right? So we've it's, seen these kinds of things. It's like those, uh, like the, the, the twitch plays pokemon or twitch plays other yes. things mm-hmm. it's Correctly. this so, for silent hill those happen so organically you can't it, force that man i well i mean um, here's the thing people i mean people have been fiending for silent hill stuff and I, I think this is interesting enough and kind of like what the fuck is this that there's at least at least up front when it first starts i think a lot of people are going to get on board and just just to see what it's all about and if they can manage to hold people's attention and do anything interesting maybe it'll snow snowball a little bit I don't know. Again, I don't know how I feel about this, but I do think it sounds interesting because I ain't drafting it. That should be like or, our insult. Well, I don't even right think now. you can draft. It's not a fucking video game. It's, it's like not. it's it is a story being told in the Silent Hill universe in an unconventional way. That's what this is. Yeah, it is a seed. It's essentially a season. What is going to be like? Think of it like a season of television, but they're they're doing an ep. I don't even know how long each of these streams is going to be. It's like 
30 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh, there's no way they could do that. I don't know. I don't know. But like, here's what's interesting is they're going to do multiple runs of this thing. And the first run, the, the, the one that they do where people make all the decisions for the first time and the story kind of unfolds because of the voting, whatever happens there becomes like canon, which makes it sound like they're going to be using the events that play out here to influence maybe other projects, Silent Hill projects. Like you'll see things referenced and like those decisions will become, this is Silent Hill canon. So the, the entire think. audience is going to supposedly watch these episodes all together at pre-scheduled times every single well, day. Every and single then day. there That's, will be a decision that is presented at the end of it in which the community votes on. And then that decision is rendered into the next episode. Okay. So the important thing that's to insane. note here, the important thing to note here is that Konami is not expecting, honestly expecting everybody to watch every episode of this on the fly. Of course. Uh, if you want to have, if you want to have a say in what happens, you, you kind of have to, right. But they're going to be doing all kinds of things to kind of like, uh, t- to keep people, up to date like they're going to have daily recaps they're going to they're going to be putting all the non interact like once they've played daily out they're going to put that up on, up on youtube so you can like watch the previous episode you can watch the episodes after they've already aired and that kind of thing um but this is weird <laughs> like i like i can't I, i'm tr- I'm, str- I'm trying to figure Nick, out like they, don't let yourself get excited because i'm no, telling you no, i am I not think this is going to be a disaster dude i'm not a, i'm not excited per se I'm interested. This has like, there's nothing about this that has me as excited as like the Silent Hill 2 remake or Silent Hill Townfall or Silent Hill F. I think those are all infinitely more interesting, but like you gotta, you, you gotta recognize that like they're putting a lot of, they're, they're putting a lot of focus. Like this is kind of, unless of course Silent Hill 2 sneaks out and becomes, is really the first thing to re- first, uh, Silent Hill project to release, which I don't think is going to happen. Cause I think this is supposed to happen later this year. Silent Hill Ascension will be essentially the first Silent Hill thing in years, in like a decade. So this this is the this is the the foot they're putting forward, right? This is the this is the game or quote unquote game. Again, I don't need, I don't think this is a biddable game. You can bid for fantasy, fantasy critics. I don't. I just don't think that qualifies. It it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't be. I think it's just the first all. thing ready. But this is also, this is the thing. Up. But you, but you have to recognize if you're trying to reboot something, a franchise that's been dead for 10 years and you're trying to like prove to people that like as, as a company, Konami is trying to prove to people that they can still they still got it. They can still do it. You know, you got to really be smart about how you do these things. Right. So they got they must have faith in this. If they're no. if they're going to let this no, be the I, first thing people see. I, I think Hill, right? the remake of Silent Hill 2 was supposed to be the first thing that came out. Well, that, I mean, that it, was sort of what the the rumors were and the talk well, was. Well, I mean, right? it could still happen because, like, I, I, I if we don't thing know. Comes out first. I just think it's because it's the first thing ready. And I, but here's the thing: I don't think, that, especially the situation. And, I, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to give Konami the benefit of the doubt here, as like, I, I know, I know, I know. Our 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 motto is "fuck Konami," but like, they know what's at stake here. The, they know how people feel about them, how people feel about Silent Hill as a franchise. They're clearly putting a lot of emphasis on trying to bring this franchise back from the dead. Even if this is the first thing ready, if they don't think this is the first thing people should be seeing of Silent Hill, then it shouldn't be the first thing released. They should hold on to it until something else comes out that can be a, a good, positive first impression, right? So... Either either they're very confident in this thing and it's going to be the first thing out, or Silent Hill Two is going to is we're going to have more information on that soon and hopefully it has a release date and that comes out first and then this is just whatever. I can't imagine they're just going to like develop a bunch of Silent Hill stuff and just release whatever the fuck is ready regardless of it of of the impact it's going to have on their overall mission to bring back Silent Hill. It see that seems crazy to me, but. This is Konami we're talking about here, so who the fuck knows? That is the key word. Yeah. Um, but, like, man, that presentation they did last year and, like, them just going, like, 200%, just, they're just going balls to the wall crazy in their push to bring back Silent Hill yeah. was really exciting. And, I like, it would suck to see the first thing out the gate be this if it's not good. So I'm, re- I'm reading a Polygon interview that was conducted earlier this week about it. 
and they're they're talking about just what the hell this project is, and I'm I'm reading the text, and it's it's hard to follow. But what I'm seeing here is that they haven't nailed down a there is going to be a, a player funding model somehow. It's not gonna, they say it's not going to be a fixed price like seventy dollars. It's, it's not going to be a monthly charge, but it's going to be something in in between, whatever the fuck that means. But they're talking about. Quote, for every 45 minutes of cinematics that we're producing, 15 minutes are branches that you won't see. So we're, they say right now it looks like there are a minimum of 36 different potential endings depending on the states of the characters by the end of it. So you have to develop that many permutations and that many possibilities on a daily fucking basis you got to account well, for. Like that's... Well, I mean, they're developing I mean, all this stuff way ahead of time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I get that. I and and obviously they probably spent like a year or two even preparing like the whole structure and how they're going to do daily fucking recaps and things like that. It's yeah, it I mean, is that's the kind of thing that you have to do with something like this. It, it's whatever. wonderfully cool and of an idea. It's ambitious as fuck, but it's, it's also be just like a so fucking Telltale game. They they put Telltale games on Netflix now. You know. It, yeah. Which is which is fine if it's a good like Telltale like you know what I mean like Silent Hill is the kind of is is a franchise I think would honestly be a good fit for like a Telltale game. I mean, um, I mean the, the but, problem I have is that this these days our immediate reactions to anything that is ongoing and not a singular release is negative. post post support and post funding. So like I am all for this idea. I am willing to let them try it, but I am. I would be very worried that they're going to do 30 days of this stuff and have planned for two years and the audience is just going to drop off and I don't, uh, the money's going to dry out. It's not going to be two years. There's not even going to be 30 days. Y'all are, we are talking no, no, way no. too much about this weird little thing, to be honest. But here's, I, I know you probably don't give a shit about it, Brad, but like we're talking about like this is the first thing that like Silent Hill is one of my favorite franchises no, in the I history you. of gaming. You, you don't, you know I mean, it's important to me. Don't. It's the first thing in 10 years. I got you. I mean, I get you, fam. Trust me. It's just I'm still waiting on that Castlevania reboot. I'm just saying. <laughs> Which also we, is not. This is, a, this is too weird and different to be anything more than a wait and see at this point. We are giving right. it a lot of lip service. Uh, I am going to. I fully intend to watch and participate with this knowing that I this could be a disaster or it could be one of the biggest surprises of the year. Like who the fuck knows? All I know is it's the first silent Hill thing in a long time. And that has a lot riding on it. So we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk first. I think we're going to catch up with Nolan about Zelda, right? You ready to talk about Zelda Nolan? Maybe pretty good, pretty good video game. And then we'll talk about system shock. We'll talk about Warhammer 40 K bolt gun. Those are both games that I've been playing lately so um if you're watching us live or listening at home don't go anywhere we'll be right back all right welcome back to the show uh it was brought to my attention during the break by Chris Davis, that um, there was actually a bid. I totally forgot uh, that to check the uh, the bids for the week. Um, and there was a bid that I did not mention during the Fantasy Critic update. So real quick, um, I don't know who bid on this. Uh, it's called... It's actually a game I've never heard of before. Not totally I've unusual. heard of it. I, I played a demo this, for it. This Dave was a recent... Like, oh, sorry. It, Dave, Dave the Diver is the game. It's, it's an early access. So no one's played a demo. This was on a recent like indie showcase thing. I saw people talking about it in our Discord. One of these, you know, future game shows. I don't know. It was probably like a month ago. Right. Um, by the way, just you just kind of mentioned it in passing, but I'm actually getting pretty excited for that future game showcase or the uh, that they do every year, which I don't usually get super excited about. But there's a lot of indie games that I think are going to pop up there yeah but that's literally the thing about e3 time is there's like a dozen indie showcases right. it actually gets sort yeah. of like tiring after a while 
I, I do know I do know one thing for sure though. Uh, the and maybe I'm the only person here who cares, but that horror game that I talked about briefly, uh, Luto, which is kind of like the next. Uh, like PT like or whatever. It's, oh, the it's one like with hyper realistic graphics. Yeah, but it's the one where the the ghosts are like are actual like people under like sheets or whatever, and they're walking around like in the oh. dark. Like yeah, uh, I've been waiting for details on that, and the, the, their Twitter account came back to life and was like tweeting about it, and uh, I tweeted at them, and they've been dropping hints that they're gonna there's gonna be an announcement during the future game showcase. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, but also because. I could see probably, but I could see uh like replaced showing up there. I could see uh you know, Hades. All right, all right. This fucker, this guy is like we've broken him. We've completely broken this guy down to like all he sees is fucking scores. That's all he ever <laughs> talks all about all anymore. Is communicated numbers. There, there, there is no communicating and talking friendly with friends about video games. It is down to fucking fantasy critic and whether this is going to make 80s or 90s or 70s or whatever hey, you know what brad we're going to talk about a 76 tonight i'm really excited to talk about um well if, if it's almost 10 so let's get there. all right well let's get going i like i said before i want to uh, i want to talk, talk I, I normally would start with like the new stuff but nolan hasn't been on the show in in you know a couple weeks um at this point so uh and he hasn't had a chance to talk about zelda I know, Chris Davis, you finished Zelda, so I know you're eager to t say some things, some closing thoughts on that. Uh, but I want to I want to start with Nolan and just kind of let him talk about his thoughts on Zelda so far. Not to, sure. not to put the throw you under the bus here, but where, yeah, you're not throwing where, me under the bus. Where, like I said, that's the only game I've played in the last months. like in the past two months. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, I was very hyped for it. Um, Loved Breath of the Wild. Um, uh, the fact that I've not been playing games for the past two months, uh, nothing was going to stop me from playing this. Unfortunately, I've only gotten about 15 hours, according to my Switch, mm -hmm. uh, however much that actually means, give or take. Um, so in all of that time, I feel like I've done nothing. Uh, I feel like I've just kind of been exploring the world, doing occasional shrines. Um, yep. As far as the story goes, I'm not that far into the story. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I have met this character that's being talked to. Uh, I forget his name now. Um, what was it? Hen. Hen. Hen the bird, but the the yeah. the, the news the reporter like the bird or whatever. Like, yeah, the like, reporter. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, so I've met him once and then he flew away and I haven't seen him since. Um, I have no idea who that is. Uh, you know, I've I've fixed a few signs that are falling over. Um, I have, um, uh, you know, I've gone in the underground, which I didn't even know was a thing leading up to yeah, this no, game. No one did. It was a thing yeah. that we've talked, uh, we were just like, what the fuck? Like, nobody knew this was an actual thing thing and to have it be so massive is ridiculous mm -hmm. yeah so that that is the other thing is you know there was obviously a lot going into this game of you know fear that oh it's just the same map from breath of the wild and and, and blah 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 i never think I, about com that like completely never irrelevant. once am i like no nope, completely irrelevant doesn't matter um it, it doesn't the matter. fact that the overworld has changed the fact that there is a sky level and an underground level like this game is fucking massive um, one of my coworkers who is, uh, you know, a little bit younger than us, uh, and, uh, uh, not, you know, doesn't have too many responsibilities. Uh, I, the other day he was telling me that he has like over 80 hours in the game. Um, and he said that he's only done a few temples. Um, and it's one of those things where, yeah, I can imagine myself playing this game for easily like 200 hours. Um, this, this is one of those games. Every time mm -hmm. I boot it up, I'm like instantly overwhelmed. Like I just, Oh Yeah. I don't know what I should be doing, where I should be mm -hmm. going. There's like there's an infinite number of right answers to those to those questions, which in and of itself is cool, I guess. Uh, but man, it's just like it it hits you hard. <laughs> and, oh no, for like, for sure. And it like I I would say that I don't want to say I'm overwhelmed. I you know I booted up. And I look around, I'm like, there's all these directions I could go. And I just pick one and I start going. Um, and so I have found, uh, I knew there was like, um, like, uh, so, so I, I picked the, the, the story gives you four places. It's like, Hey, right. there's shit going on in these four places. And I picked one of them 
And that just Which went towards it. Um, the northwest, northeast, southeast. Uh, you know, uh, northeast. Okay, um, so you went so towards I, I, the the mountains, like towards correct. the like Death Mountain. Death Mountain. Yes, Death Mountain. Yeah, yeah, and I just got to the Goron City, mm -hmm. um, but I was kind of exploring that area. I didn't go straight there. I knew that hey, I'm going to do this place first. But I didn't beeline for it. I've kind of been, like I said, doing shrines along the way. Um, I did pass like Zora's domain, uh, but I didn't really do a whole lot there. I just like right now, I'm just kind of exploring the world. Um, and I got to Terrytown. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, and so th I've been doing some stuff for for the Hudson Construction Company and stuff. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's. There's just so much to do. And every time I boot it up, I'm like, all right, well, first off, my first thing today is I'm, I'm, you know, I'm scanning. I have them all here on my desk. Um, I'm scanning all of my, my amiibos. Um, you know, I'm getting all the this daily motherfucker. unlocks <laughs> for the is, amiibos. Right? All of your I've amiibos. Yes. I've never bothered with hey, what, what do you mean? Look, look at here. Look, Chris Davis. Look at, look at all these amiibos. Look, God, you I got, got the fucking Moblin. Jeez. Yeah. Well, so then that's the thing. The reason I have them, obviously, was from the original uh, from Breath of the Wild. Uh, but that's because the actual Zelda amiibos give you special things. And so every time you scan one once a day, you get a chest and that chest can have just nice stuff in it. Maybe a really good weapon, uh, maybe a really good shield. But like the actual like, you know, all the different like links uh, will have uh, sometimes they'll have one a piece of their outfit. Um, so like tunic of the hero or something like that, and it's a it's a rare chance. And actually, out of all like of the days I've been, defense and shit. Um, they're not. They're more. I think aesthetic. They're not like the best. I, I think there's better armor sets you can get in the game. Uh, I did but find tunic of how much of a cheater you are. <laughs> I I did find that tunic of the hero by chance in the uh in the depths. So like mm -hmm. some of those things yeah. you can you can find. Oh yeah, I'm pretty right sure all of them you can get in the game for sure. Uh, but this yeah. is just hey, there's a small chance. And once again, it's a nice thing just because most of the time I do get good weapons, and obviously in these games your weapons break. Um, and so it's nice that I get a good quality one, and they're often, or to my knowledge, almost always they're not decayed, so they're like higher quality and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it's a nice little like you know I guess cheat way to get like a good weapon or hey, shield. What do you get or, when you or, use an amiibo that's not uh, Zelda? Just usually just stuff. Some food. Uh, yeah. 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 Just like ingredients and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I have like a Pikachu and I have like a Mario uh, and they just give you random like, you know, flowers or, you know, mushrooms, food, apples, stuff like that. Man, mm -hmm. I've kind of become obsessed now with with. And, and maybe it was this way with Breath of the Wild. I can't really remember, but um, I find myself dying a lot in this game. So I've become kind of obsessed with doing shrines because I want to bring those back and, and boost my, my hearts that way. It's um, crazy because... that like I thought I was going to be all stamina and then I decided, you know, what? who cares about stamina? I need battery and health. Yeah. So so here's the funny thing. I remember uh, playing a lot of Breath of the Wild and they released that patch or I can't remember if it was the DLC or whatever. They give you like the hero's path. And it shows you all the places you died and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And so I start playing this game and I'm like four hours in and I haven't died once. And they're like, man, I'm going to go like 50 hours before dying. And since then, I've died like 20 times, dude. Like yeah. there's like so many times I encounter an enemy and I'm like, this guy's probably not that tough. And he like one hit kills me. And I'm like, oh, OK, then he's, yeah. uh, he's a little tougher than I thought he was. Yeah. I, you know, the Heroes Path DLC transfers over to this game is that hmm. i mean it wouldn't surprise me considering the horse I'm stuff sure. also transfers like like you can yeah. but, but i mean uh, like can you see your path through this yes world? yes i bought the dlc on wii u so i don't have the dlc <laughs> on switch no oh. so so can i just buy the dlc for breath of the wild and it shows up in this I, I didn't i didn't buy the dlc for breath of the wild and i got it so it, it's built into the game hmm. wait what do you mean the hero's oh, path stuff is in there you unlock it in the game Yes. The thing where you see everywhere you've been in the world? Yes. Oh, how do you unlock that? Where do it's, I go? It, it is a side quest that you have to go on, but yeah, you can unlock it. Okay, well, where does said side quest start? Finish your first main quest uh, and then go back to Lookout Don't Landing and is. talk to uh, one of the Sheikah. And uh, they'll go okay. back to Tano Village and you'll be able to upgrade your uh, Pura Pad. Hmm, okay. interesting. Oh, that's why he's not. That's that. why that dude is trying to get me to upgrade my Pura Pad so much. It's that I just haven't been focusing on that. Um, 
What was I going to say? Real quick, somebody in chat, I think it was Frowning Bear in chat, said something about he wanted, he wanted to know if Nolan felt the, sense, the way I did. And he put it in, to quote him, he said, I was underwhelmed or something by, hold on. If this game hasn't gripped him like Breath of the Wild, like it hasn't gripped me. I want to be very clear. This game absolutely has gripped me. Um, and, and a lot of what I said, this is a situation kind of like Brad was talking about earlier where he was afraid he maybe uh, didn't do a, a good enough job like, explaining his thoughts on Dragon's Dogma. I feel like maybe it's kind of the same way here with Tears of the Kingdom because I, I am very much in love with this game and I am very much having a fantastic time. The familiarity thing is 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 like, if I had to reach for a a critique of this game, a criticism, it might be, it's a little, it's a little too familiar for my for my taste. But that's crazy. It, that's it's so not crazy, dude. Like the, the, ex, the all I'm saying is that there, there's so many great Zelda games that have come out over the years, and one of the most exciting things about all of them is is how they reinvent the world, the look and feel of of Zelda. Okay. Okay. Over I and mean, over again, and they, this is. About it, so I know. I, I, yeah. It's just like I, I don't know why I'm having a hard. I don't know why I'm having a hard time explaining this, and everybody assumes I'm being super negative or super critical. No, of it. I'm mean, saying, look, look, it's just like, look, no one heard you saying that about Ragnarok or anything, right? It just seems like it's just an incredibly exciting game, and it almost seems like you're looking for a criticism. And I, I know you kind of feel it, but like you're enjoying it as much as we are. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's all I'm saying is. That is like the only thing I can maybe reach for as far as the criticism goes, because I, I it, it it's still boggling my mind that not only is this game as massive and as intricate and as complex as it is, it's also technically sound. Like I have had zero technical problems with this game and I'm just OK. Uh, I do feel like we're, we're just kind of rehashing what we said last week. Let's I know, talk I know, about I know. Pura instead. What about Pura? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> It's fucking uh, gay. Yeah. This, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I keep forgetting uh, to look uh, up some fan art. I'm sure I, there's plenty. Oh, there is. I mean, mm. I didn't say that. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, you know, uh, to, to sum up what he was saying, W A L A P J S W. We are living in a post Jedi survivor world. Oh. Oh. Okay. That was a stretch. That was okay. I can't believe he went for that. Um, you know, I, this is also strangely I find this game really hard to talk about, and I think it's, I think a lot of that stems from just how much ground there is to cover um, about it. Because also, like like Crispy last week was talking about, he was like, "You haven't even got the auto build thing yet." I still haven't got the auto build thing. Like the most complicated Nick, thing I've built to this point. Fun yet. No, oh, I got I, fucking I stop say saying it. shit I, like I, that. I, I, I don't mean to true. say it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that is an upgrade worth chasing down because... I don't know where it is. Not everyone is going to have the same experience. And some people might be having more fun than others because <sighs> they have things like auto build. Do you, but you're do you also... Know, you're perpetuating... So you, how much have you been down into the depths, though? Because I've spent, I feel I've like, spent like four hours, five hours exploring the depths last weekend. But like, but like randomly or you follow like the very main first thing you do when you get down there? Dude, I will say everything I do in this game is randomly. Like you I, I should. <laughs> so I think I think you need to follow a little bit of the carrots they're presenting for, for towards you, like side quest story ish kind of stuff. Because the 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 quest that takes you down into the depths, if you follow it along, you know, and they'll, they'll say like, oh, like follow these statues. Like not only do you end up doing like some crazy stuff, but like I have to follow the statues. I have been following the statues. They don't take like I I so follow like from I, the starting point that the game pointed you at. I guess I should say. Okay, well I haven't done that. I've gone into the depths in like four or five different places, and I've followed the statues for like twenty statues, and mm. I never goes anywhere. And then I'm no, just like, they, well, I guess they I'm all go. go. They all go somewhere, and okay. just follow them, and they lead you to something. Trust me. Well, just I, look up I, how to get auto build and do that because you know what it is, though, right? Yeah, I know what it is. Oh, okay. I'm just I don't know why I find this game is really hard to talk about and and it's honestly quite frustrating to talk about at times. I, I will because... tell you I think I I think I know the reason why. I think the reason okay. why is that this is such a kind of a magical game that we do not want to feel responsible for spoiling it for people. You kind of want to just cuz before we even did last podcast or the podcast before that, we were like, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about this. Do your best not to spoil one another. 
Like well, right. we, we had and, intricate discussions about this. I mean, I am not I am I am not far enough to spoil anything for most people at this point because even though I've yeah, probably I'm spent upwards of 30 hours you actually in it, are. Like, you've done so one you think temple. You think you're still. 30 hours in? My clock says 35 hours. I think it's closer to 25. And but, for you, 25 is like other people's 15, right? Because you kind of like take your time, you take pictures or whatever you do. You slow walk. I don't, I don't know. But I'm saying you, you usually kind of like... This fucking your, guy. Historically, your game time is like stretched. This, a, a, I don't... Out. This doesn't have a photo mode that I really... That I know, yet. but you know what I'm saying. Like, you, you know, it, <laughs> here's a good example. What, you're trying, this, this is, this is what fucking, you're trying to say is I don't fast travel. No, well, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, honestly. But I'm saying you, you take a long time. So, you know, I played the Alone in the Dark demo, and I was like, let's see how long this demo is. And it was it's like minutes. Prince, nine minutes, this person 10 minutes, this person 10 minutes, this person 11 minutes, Nick, 18 minutes. And I was like, yep, that's my Nick. <laughs> <laughs> he took 18 minutes on a 10-minute demo. Well, no, I did stream it, so I was probably sitting on the menu for a while before I actually hit start. <laughs> so I don't know if that... Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm just saying, there's so much in this world, and you're so much you still need to see. And I, I well, yeah. But, like, this is, it's also the kind of game, I think all of us can attest to this, is that, like, I, every time I, I think I'm setting off to do something, like, I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I make a decision. This is what I'm going to do. And then, like, five minutes later, I see something, and I'm like, ah. Uh... Uh, what is that? And then I start going and then I go do that. And then I completely forget what the fuck I was doing a minute ago. And that's, that's this entire game. It's crazy. Yeah. Th- it's this like, game should be you know, called the legend of Zelda tangent of the kingdom. You know, you know how everybody talks shit about open world games because they're like big checklists and shit. Sure. Uh, this is like the exact opposite of that. Um, because nothing I do here is like, is really following it or like, I'm not, chasing down points on a map i'm like looking off into the distance with my with my with my uh my eyeglass thing right and then seeing something marking it thing and going that direct like i'm making the points right and then i am constantly letting myself be distracted by other things rather than going into a menu and looking at what my quests are right which which is which is great it's so it's super refreshing Uh, especially in a world where i think a lot of people just tend to think that you know open world games have begun kind of creatively bankrupt. Um, but sometimes I'm just like, you know, would it kill you to just tell me <laughs> where to go every once in a while? Fuck. Uh, it's, it's I, such, think, I, I don't think I, I think really want main, that. I think but, for the main story, it definitely kind of guides you with points on the map and stuff. But then I think for a lot of the more side questy stuff, it does leave it a little more open and doesn't exactly you know, put a pinpoint always on your map and it it allows yeah. you to kind of figure it out by talking to that person and them telling you, Oh, go here. And then you yeah. go there. And it's one of those things where if you don't pay attention, you might not immediately realize what was going on and maybe you don't do it right away, but you might find it later on because now that, that thing's always going to be there. And if you're exploring the world, you'll, you know, run into it, you'll encounter it. But right. I think this I world really is just so massive. Bad. I don't really feel mm-hmm. too bad about skipping things because I know I'll eventually run into it again. Um, you know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about over the past few weeks, and, and maybe that's because a lot of us weren't at a point where we could say much about it. Um, but obviously, the kind of the elephant in the room when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom is the thing that cracks this game wide open and makes and and makes it one of the most remarkable games from a design standpoint ever made. I think, which is you know, the creation aspect, right? The thing we've For spent sure. almost no time talking about, like the, the tool set that they give you to create things. And so, albeit yeah, there are that, people who have created that's a, lot. a little iffy dicey talking about, cause we don't want to get into spoilers and there's so much of that stuff you haven't seen, but like, but, but even, yeah, no, there's a ton that I haven't seen, but I, but I am starting to appreciate, gr- develop an appreciation for it. And, and, and what I think is so brilliant about this game is that, First of all, the shrines in in in, the, in Breath of the Wild, while I think they were full of really remarkable puzzle design, um, they also felt very repetitive, and they felt like just in terms of like visually speaking, I got really tired of looking at them, and mm-hmm. they didn't seem like they served as much of a purpose as much as they were kind of replacing another element of Zelda that I've always loved, which is the temples. This game kind of gives you the temples back in a way, but also like completely changes 
the, the shrines and makes them way more um, purposeful. Like, yeah. I, every time I go into a shrine, it blows my mind. Like, it's teaching you something very specific. And all of a sudden, and, and, and they're teaching you things that you can do, you can always do, but you didn't know you could do, do them until you go into the shrine and then you do this thing and you're like, holy shit, that's just, a, a, that's just knowledge I'm now going to take out into the bigger, wider, open world. And just, I'm going to file that in my brain and maybe that'll come in handy later. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but like I, they, are, they are like all still kind of visually boring. Uh, uh, they, are, yeah. they are a little visually boring, but I, I will say this. I do like the kind of, uh, what, what do you call it? Like kind of like the Japanese garden aesthetic they have with kind of like the, uh, like the, the designs and like the, the sand, not sand, but you know, you don't know, you know what I'm talking zen about, garden. right? Like, yeah, like the Zen um, garden so, vibe to them. So I will say that while they do feel improved and I do feel like, especially a lot of the earlier shrines and you kind of t towards the starting area. Um, do really feel like they do a good job of easing you in and kind of slowly teaching you how to use your abilities. Um, and it's very much, you know, like the swapper, that indie game we played a while back, where you literally have everything <laughs> you need at the very beginning of the game to solve every puzzle in the game. You just don't understand yet. And I feel like that's how this game is sometimes, Absolutely. where you just don't know how to make use of what you've been given. Um, but I will echo my issues from the original from Breath of the Wild that I still really wish the shrines had just like a little more feeling of the world around them, uh, yeah. be it, you know, a shrine in like kind of the foresty area would just have more vines and plants, you know, a shrine in like the Death right. Mountain area would have more like rocks and lava and stuff. I just really feel like just like a small, even just like palette swap would just make them even go that much further. Uh, but I no, still I have totally been agree. Enjoying them. Uh, you know, Guys, another thing about right. the, the shrines that that I that I really like, and this is just really small detail. It has it has no almost no bearing on like the actual puzzles themselves or anything. But like one, I felt like I couldn't walk ten feet without hitting a shrine in Breath of the Wild, <laughs> and I feel like they're way more spread out here. And the fact that you can see them from afar and identify the ones that you haven't completed yet because of that yep. swirling green stuff mm -hmm. i think it's a fantastic design choice um you can well, instantly identify if it's, a, it's a, if it's a shrine that you've completed or not from a, well, from a very yeah but very long well runway. i mean that that no not exactly i mean it that light identifies whether you've unlocked that shrine Okay, but that's... if you actually want to defend, defend, definitively know whether you've actually beaten that shrine after you've unlocked it, if you go into the map, it has a different symbol to uh, accommodate right. that. I guess, to be fair, when I go into a shrine, I don't leave until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in fact, um, uh, I, there, was a, there was a shrine last weekend. I, I, was, I, was, I spent two and a half hours playing Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of the Wild, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, the entirety of that session was spent in that shrine trying to figure out this puzzle. And, and for every, every shrine that, like, I do in, like, ten, five, ten minutes, there is a shrine that takes me, like, two or three times that. So, like, there are some out there that are really fucking the crazy. The combat challenges are pretty crazy sometimes. I've only done, like, two or three of those, honestly, at this point. Um, can, can I say, and mm -hmm. my God got other games to talk about but i will say so i've been looking at pura art and i'm just talking about like <laughs> fan art it. there is so much good i'm not like i'm not talking about the porny stuff i'm just talking about okay. pura not just fan the porny art, stuff filter mature filter on whatever like there's so much amazing fan art for this lady or pro probably a lot of the characters from zelda but i'm just like the artist really showed up for this one. My God, there's like really <laughs> good stuff out there. Holy shit! Brad, I'm gonna need you to post some links in Discord to the to the appropriate just, ones. All right, just Google Pura fan art. There's so much good stuff here. With safe search on or what? No, with safe <laughs> search on. Definitely with it I'm off. Saying, I'm saying with it on. I'm fucking blown away here. My God. All right. I know what know. I'm gonna see when I take this the. The safe search off. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, you know, oh, real quick. Can I just it. say, and I, I can't, I, maybe I said this last week. I don't remember. Sorry. I apologize if I'm, if I'm re being redundant here, but every, every time I play this game, I, I find a new reason to go. Holy shit. Ascent is like one of the coolest fucking things 
I've ever seen in a it's game. It's really good. Like it's like anytime I go into a yep. cave system and I spend like 20 minutes exploring and I'm like really deep in there and I'm like, oh, I I think I found everything I need to find. And, but instead of like fast traveling or like turning around and just walking back to the entrance, I just fucking ascend through the ceiling and pop out on the top of a mountain. Yep. And that's it. What? <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Um, I mean, it, I mean, there, there is luster for me a little bit. Oh. There, oh, there man. is no aspect of the tools that they give you in this game that it's not going to just continue to escalate because you're always yeah, going to find like, some new, new way to use it. Finding new ways to like combine, like rewind and ascend and, and you know, just, it's just the combinations are endless. All right, before we move on, I do want to give Chris Davis a chance. You, you did say you finished it. I want you to be very careful what you say, Chris Davis. <laughs> but, I, I will. Uh, Let us know what you what you think. You finished so, it. So so my switch and and by the way, I really 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 want us to do a spoiler cast about this game because it, it's it's oh. too good not to do one. Um, I would love to when I fin- finish it in fourteen years. Yeah, well, hopefully you finish it for the end of this year. I uh, my switch, I am certain, is lying to me because it says I put one hundred and forty five hours into this game. It's I don't lying. Believe it. It, there's, there's I mean, no way you I certainly did over 100, I'm pretty sure. But like that, that clock is all kinds of wrong. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, it's it, it is alleging that I have spent much almost twice as much time playing this than I did Breath of the Wild, which cannot be true. That's impossible. Why can why can Nintendo just not get the simple things right? Like just a fucking clock, like an in like, why do I have to even go to a menu outside of the game to find out how much time I've spent? I feel like an in-game clock should be a default feature on every video yeah, game no, ever like, made. Like the, the, I mean, with, with that minor nitpick, I entirely agree with you. Also, I do have legitimate nitpicks about the production of this game. Now that I've completed it, mm-hmm. um, which, which we can go into in a spoiler cast eventually. Uh, but I absolutely adore this game. Uh, it wasn't in, in hindsight, it wasn't the story I wanted them to tell, but mm-hmm. it ended up being a really good story that I enjoyed nonetheless. I you were wanting uh, something specific. There were several things I wanted specifically that the Don't. story I, that we will talk about on the spoiler cast okay. um, that were just not delivered here, but mm-hmm. still came out really well done. Can I ask you a quick question, real quick? What do you like better, this or Jedi Survivor? this okay Thank i don't know what your obsession is with this should i survive asking, thing, as a chris davis question you're not a part of this conversation nick <laughs> brad every time you mention a post jedi survivor world you're looking at me and thinking of me when oh, you say no, it. it's a post jedi survivor world for you for the rest of us it's a post tears of the kingdom world you're a fucking weirdo okay um all right i I I, uh, I had so much fun exploring the depths, finding all these little treasures. I stumbled in an, into an entire main quest line just from wandering around doing stuff. A uh, main quest doing, line or a side quest line? No, an entire main quest line. I just walked into it. Mm. And, and not to put too fine a point to, on it, but Nintendo did a very good job on thinking about players running into that scenario and then accommodating the game's story to account for that. Oh, okay. Like that's I, w- that's I was completely... they have a really good grip. They have a really good grip on just player freedom in this game, and like it, you can tell that like they didn't sacrifice anything by giving you that kind of freedom, right? Like you can still experience the story in any number of or like in any order you want, in any any a countless number of of, of ways, uh, and still kind of get the same experience. Um, yeah. which is very impressive. Very like, impressive. like my only legitimate nitpick as far as like gameplay goes is the fact that this game has very, very, very little in the way of accessibility, um, which feels in the modern day, really short sighted. Um, only uh, well, having I guess my only question would be what, it, what, when you say accessibility, what are you referring to? That, that can mean any like number all of the things. Sony shit. Well, yeah, like, I mean, s- simple things like controller remapping, but also things like auto pickup and visibility stuff and things like that. Oh, yeah. That, that's not in here. And for this entire generation, it's felt like a, a, a blast to see these things pop up. Nintendo didn't yeah, do that I, at all. I don't think Nintendo has ever really, I mean, that's been kind of a Sony Microsoft focused effort i feel like maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe somebody can leave a comment let me know if there's you know something i'm not thinking of but i feel like nintendo has never really prioritized that kind of stuff which is a shame um but worth obviously worth bringing up all right yeah. 
uh let's let's move on uh i have two games i want to talk about one more than the other uh real quick I j- I'll, I'll get the sh- i'll get the short one out of the way uh because after last week after the podcast we were talking and i think it came up in random conversation on the podcast about uh boomer shooters or whatnot because obviously i've been on kind of a boomer shooter kick lately and i didn't realize that there's this warhammer 40k bolt gun game and i didn't mm-hmm. realize that was a boomer shooter i thought it was one of those other you know random like i don't, I don't know some other genre that i just wasn't interested in right uh <laughs> turns out that there is a boomer shooter set in the Warhammer universe, uh, and I had I had to try it out. There, so, There is uh, a Warhammer game or Warhammer 40K game for every genre every of gaming genre. possible. It doesn't matter. Every genre. And if, it, I mean, if, it, if there is not there, it's in development right now. Yes, yeah. I mean, obviously, Warhammer is a huge series. I've only ever played Space Marine, right? We did that for the Revival Club. I'm very excited for Space Marine 2, even though I have some... Uh, uh, I don't know what to think of it because it's not the same developer, there's, all that there's stuff. There's footage right? now and people seem kind of interested. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, I, no doubt I'm interested. I think oh, they're um, more hopeful than interested, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see where that goes. That's on Crispy's list, by the way. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see oh, what comes I know back. it's on his list. But uh, uh, that's a Nolan counter pick. If that comes out and does well, that there's some hope for us or Crispy uh, or whoever. Um, so. You know, I I, pick, I ended up picking this up along with Prot, <laughs> which is another boomer shooter that I have not tried yet, but I picked both of them up last week, uh, and I decided I wanted to try this one first. Right? Um, this game is uh, so I, I've I've heard mixed things about this game because when it, when I bought it last week, it was sitting with like an overwhelmingly positive on Steam. It's gone down a bit. Mm-hmm. I know Carlos has played this and was not happy with it, or not pleased with it at all, um, and I've heard some of his complaints. I, I don't consider myself like a like a boomer shooter connoisseur or like an expert or anything, right? So most of what I'm 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 like my reactions to this game are just based off of like how does it feel to play? How does it feel to to shoot things? Is it am I actively having fun while doing it? I don't like getting down into the nitty gritty. I'm sure there are, like this is not like Duke Nukem 3D, right? This is not going to have like really, really super satisfying secrets. There are secrets to be found. Um, they usually come in the form of just like temporary like boons that give you like, like, you know, infinite ammo for a short period of time or boosts or whatever. And then just that, uh, that kind of reward for, you know, you found this many secrets in this level, mm-hmm. pretty standard stuff. And the level design, some of the levels are, are more straightforward than others. Um, but some are actually really intricate and, and, and fun to explore. But like, I never really get that sense of like really feeling truly rewarded exploring it. Like I, I have in some of the other shooters I've played. And I think obviously Duke Nukem 3d is, is kind of the gold standard, right? Unless I'm doom oh, or I mean, doom. I mean, quake. I mean, yeah, there's like a billion of them that are great. Yeah. yeah and actually Carlos did recommend that I, I try, cause I, I guess the remastered or version of the original quake, I guess is, is a, is, is a big deal these days yeah. and i've never no, i've never played quake. quake the first quake is amazing so I, I might try that eventually at some point um but like what i will say about this game is that i, I really really enjoy the art style and how it brings kind of the, the warhammer uh i or universe kind of into this into the genre it's like super colorful it does it has that really cool like kind of retro vibe to it um shooting dudes feels really nice i Everybody seems to die really quickly in this in this mm-hmm. game. Like I shoot dudes and like after two bullets, there's a there's a few different there's a few uh, exceptions to that rule. Like there's there's some like like of the, of the bigger like space marine type enemy types that are these hulking brutes that take a lot of firepower. So it it, it ends up becoming less about like can you shoot them until they die and more about can you dodge all these bullets long enough to shoot them. Uh, mm-hmm. and, until they die, right? But like most smaller enemies, like one or two shots, and they just fucking explode into <laughs> a rain of gore. Well, there's uh, a reason why it's called a bolt gun, not a bullet gun. Like it's yeah. the 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 bullets it's, you're firing are about the size of your arm, practically. Yeah, it, but, but you know what this game does that I think you know. Again, only played Space Marine up until this point, but the thing that instantly stuck out to me in Space Marine was like how powerful you feel and how like just you feel like this hulking brute and just, oh, it's, it just it's, has it's like, a power fantasy. Absolutely. Yeah. This game and this game really plays into that really well. In fact, there's been several times where I thought I was being stalked by like some big enemy. And I was like, where the fuck is that coming from? And then I realized, Oh, that's me. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm walking around. I'm, I'm hearing myself. Stomp. Yeah, I'm the beast, right? Like it's, which is a cool feeling. 
Um, and, and this game takes advantage of that pretty well. Um, I'm not done with this yet. I, I feel like it's it's kind like from a gameplay standpoint. I'm in the middle of chapter or act two of three, right? So there's a bunch of levels in each chapter. Um, and I feel like it's kind of run its course. I don't think there's a huge arsenal of weapons here. So I feel like I've kind of already seen everything this game has to offer from a gameplay standpoint. But shooting things is still a lot of fun. So I'm going to just kind of, you know, I'll do like one or one or two of these missions a week or something until it's eventually done. Um, so that's Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. Remember how the I told other... you there's like a boomer shooter every week? I just want to say <laughs> one that came are you... out. Uh, are you trying to get me to buy the... another boomer shooter? No, 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 no. This one's <laughs> not for you. This is for fans of Hypnospace Outlaw. I don't know who here. Did anybody here play that? I think no one. Uh, a couple of years ago, bit, Hypnospace yeah. Outlaw yeah. is super cool. Anyways, the spit Zane. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Zane or Zane sucks. Anyways, they made a spinoff boomer shooter called Slayer's X Terminal Aftermath: Vengeance of the Slayer. That Holy came shit! Out a, a couple it come out, came out a couple of days ago, and it's on Game Pass. And I watched the trailer, and my god, the aesthetic is revolting, but it's just <laughs> super appropriate. Um, so yeah, check what's it, it called again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's called uh, Slayer's X Terminal Aftermath: Vengeance of the Slayer. <laughs> There's multiple colons in there too. It's great. That's yeah. that's fantastic. All right. Um, the other the other game I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, the re- the remake of System Shock. Right. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a, a while now. Um, in fact, I even tried to get Crispy to trade this with me for Redfall, but uh, you know <laughs> he, he didn't do it. He, oh, he didn't take the bait. Oh, it hurts my soul. He won um, Redfall. He wanted Redfall, and I, I legitimately wanted System Shock. And at the time, I thought no, that was a really good trade. you were trying to throw in trade. some other bullshit. I think if you would have just straight up did that one, Redfall for, for uh, System for Shock, System he Shock. Gave it to you. He was I, also I, trying I to throw wrong. in Suicide Squad is what he was doing. Yeah, that is what you do. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe I should and maybe I should have. Maybe I should have just said, fuck it. But, you know, can't go back now. Anyways, I'm playing the remake of System Shock. This has kind of become my new obsession. Um, I, and I fully intend to finish this. Uh, and also... I wasn't sure the best way to talk about this because and and the reason this is getting kind of uh mi- I would say middling reviews because it's like like I said it's like a 76 right now on open critic um when in in actuality like well I I would just say like honestly I'm playing this game I think it I think it deserves way more than than that and, but the reason a lot of these critics are are scoring it the way they are seems to be that it is a very safe remake it is and as and i'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who'd never played the original system shock i played a little bit of system shock too um but i i i i I don't consider myself like an expert on system shock by any means i Um, i don't think that safe is the proper adjective here i think that it's uh too true to its source material that's safe I, I mean, I, it's one definition of safe, I suppose. I mean, here, here, here's here's the fact of the matter is, um, they've this is largely a visual and quality of life overhaul of the original System Shock. M- mechanically speaking, design speaking, like it is almost as as I understand it, like frame for frame, exactly the same as the original System Shock. It's basically bringing System Shock into a, into the modern age. Uh, making it a little bit more accessible, adding in some nice quality of life features, and then completely overhauling the visual style, uh, and maybe even I guess maybe the the like the uh, voice acting and stuff has probably been redone, um, but like the map's exactly the same, the stuff that you do to progress is exactly the same, mechanic the things that you do to like upgrade your character and heal yourself and and just progress or push through the story exactly the same. Uh, as the original so it's kind of a weird it's kind of in a weird spot because for me i'm playing this for the first time and i'm like holy shit this game is good and if this was a completely original game if system shock was just coming out for the first time i think this game would be mid 80s not that that fucking matters because we're 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 obsessed with numbers here now i guess but like it would be scoring higher um um you know night dive also did a remaster of um System Shock, System Shock Two, S- several so, no, the first game. Oh, oh, oh yeah, they yeah. Did yeah. A, uh, they did just a HD remaster and released it. Uh, I don't know, maybe like half a decade ago, and it scored uh, high eighties. So, uh, well, I will it's say funny this: that their full on remake is. Strange. And honestly, that's probably a big reason why maybe this didn't 
get like people probably saw this and were like, I don't feel like I can score this the same because they've already kind of in a way done this once before, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, this is a much more significant overhaul, obviously, than that than that remaster from before. Um, but like, man, this game is fucking phenomenal, and it's 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 weird. Like, I don't I don't want to sit here and talk about System Shock like it's some new thing, right? Like, if you've played System Shock before, you know what this is. It's new uh, to you. you. It's new to me, and like, this is the kind of thing I'm playing it. I'm playing it right now, and I'm just like, well, yeah, I could put this on my top ten at the end of the year. I'm having a fucking blast playing this. Like, just the 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 way that the map the map is super complex right and but you the way that they kind of guide you they don't hold your hand through it it's 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 a game purely about exploration pushing through making decisions to make your push through that through this space station more um easier i suppose right so like every level you're on so you go from medical to research to maintenance right every level has their own separate like security system and there are ways to to over time damage the security system so that less enemies will flock to your position right so you you got to keep your eye out for security cameras or uh terminals you can hack or you know any number of things um and over time just navigating the space station becomes easier and you feel more like okay now i feel like i can freely walk through these halls uh to do to you know explore accomplish these objectives without getting quite as much pushback and that kind of like flow is still really fucking nice. But again, that's the way it was in the original System Shock. So I'm not sure what I can say about this game to like sell it, really. But like this is it's it's fascinating to me playing this for the first time and then and knowing what I know about like Bioshock because you can see you can see how Bioshock kind of evolved from this, right? But you can also see, like, I can, I, I finally kind of have an appreciation for like, Bioshock. I think is a much simpler game, I guess, compared to this. Like, you, you can, like, I just feel like it's a more straightforward experience. It feels more like a first-person shooter, well, while this feels more, way more focused on like exploration. I guess. Is, well, but, but also, like, Bioshock is is more like a spiritual successor to System Shock Two in a way. Like, it's. Yeah. I mean, Which that was, was that's, that's a distinction I, I don't feel qualified to make because I've only ever played System Shock 2 for a couple hours, I guess. Um, and that was a long time ago. Uh, I would love to see them give System Shock 2 this treatment. I don't think I don't know if they're going to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if not, we get but... a new System Shock product, it's going to be like a reboot of the System Shock 3 product. Whatever but what the fuck is. Is, is System Shock 3 even still happening? It's been like one of those things like it's been it was announced ages ago and I at, don't think we've Warren my Spector understanding is, working on is it. at at best is paused right now because Night Dive has to go get more funding elsewhere. Uh, well, at is worst, Night Dive the one likely canceled? Was Night Dive the studio making some Shock Three? I feel like it was. Uh, I know I Warren Spector was, was working on it. Maybe somebody in chat can look it up or something. I don't know, but um, all I know oh, is like I'm, uh, I'm, other side entertainment. Other side entertainment. That's that's what I thought. I didn't think it was Night Dive because Night Dive almost exclusively does remasters. Rem- Night, like, Night Dive is involved, but yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. But other, probably other only from like ones. an asset production standpoint, I would imagine, because um, that's kind of what they do, right? Night Dive is kind of like the blue point of of you know retro PC games or <laughs> or something. I don't know. Um, but man, I don't know. I just wanted to say like this game is also really hard. <laughs> like. I don't know. I don't know what's happening right now, but like I'm going through this place and I am completely out of health, and it is it is throwing enemies at me and giving me all kinds of weapons and ammo. But like, man, I don't need weapons and ammo more than I need health right now, and it is just not giving it to me. But like, I have on multiple occasions been like, well, I guess it's not going to give me much to use for health, so I'm just going to like try and survive long enough to make the trip back to medical because there's like a med bay you can use multiple times to like completely heal heal yourself. Uh, and that the prospect of trying to like get back to medical without dying in and of itself is uh scary but hey that's i guess that's part of the experience and it's really cool i also just love um again this is you know true to the original system shock but i think it's cool to see uh in practice here is like it's kind of like deus ex in the sense like you're finding all these like um uh enhancements like like chips that you can like actually install in your that that are 
augments that that you can turn on and off that use because you have a you have a health meter and an energy meter and anything that you use anything that that you turn any augment you activate will slowly drain your energy meter but that energy meter can also be used to fire certain guns that rely on that pure, they don't use ammo they use energy so like it's kind of a trade-off so it's like turning on your your flashlight in your helmet drains the the same energy you would use for other things so it's kind of like a trade-off but you have all these chips you're like you're plugging them into your into your suit and you're getting all this like cool new stuff in your HUD, but you can only you can switch things on and off as needed. And that shit's really cool. I mean, it's 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 been done before, but it, it looks it looks great. It works great here. I can't help but feel like this is probably the smoothest experience you're going to have playing uh, the original System Shock. And it's I think as far as remakes go, it's just really fucking well done. Uh, hmm. So I do highly recommend it. We're living in a good um, age of remakes. It's a it's it's a good time. I mean, yeah, yeah there's a lot of good remakes. I mean, a lot of interesting remakes in the works, and this is just turns out to be one that I think was done particularly, uh, particularly well. So we, I would say don't have... be. The one thing I want to say is don't be swayed necessarily by, uh, seeing this game getting like seventies and seventy fives because I don't think that's coming from a place of like this is a bad game. It's coming from a place of this could have been more ambitious, I suppose. Um, maybe not from night dive though maybe not from night dive um but like if if you're one of those people that like loved the original system shock and like don't want to see it changed in any significant way but just want to have a really nice way to play it this is for you if you've never played system shock and you want to try it this is for you you know but like i think that going into it critics were probably sitting here going like they could have changed some stuff to make it like feel new and they they didn't do that that's the thing People, I think when people think of System Shock, they probably have System Shock 2 in their head. Yes. And System Shock 1 is so old. That game came out shortly after Doom. The yeah. original yeah. Doom. That game is fucking old. And so anything you do like to the art, it's still this old ass fucking game, which was great back then, but it's fucking old. I, I, I will say that if, you, if you're not like intensely familiar with the history of System Shock, playing this, I, I don't, I think people, most people who had that same level of knowledge about it would be shocked to like learn more about where, like what system shock one actually was like go, how old go it look, is. Go look at what no, system I, shock I'm familiar with it. Like. It's I'm familiar with old. it. Not, not the remaster from night dive. Go look up screenshots or video or whatever. Yeah. Screenshots no, I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people see system shock one, right. And they think, and in their head, whether they intend to or not are probably thinking of system shock two. For sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a lot older than that. <laughs> and this game feels modern. It feels good to play. Like, this is not, there's nothing about this that makes me go, I feel like I'm playing a game from 30 years ago or whatever the fuck it was. Um, even though, even though, I guess, uh, what's, I don't know what the word I'm, I'm trying to think of is, but like, on a surface level, it totally is. But, they've managed to make it feel modern and fitting. And that's really cool. So I highly recommend it. Go check it out. It's definitely a damn good video game. Um, and so with far. that, what? Yeah, so far. I mean, I'm like five or six hours into it at this point. I don't, it feels like a pretty big game, too. So I think I still got a ways to go. But I have every intention of finishing this, hopefully before Diablo hits. Um, fuck. Anyways, does anybody else have any? There wasn't anything else in the dock. Does anybody else have any other games they want to play? I've just been playing the good ones that are already out. All right. Same. Yep. Chris Davis. Oh, I know Chris Davis. You said you're trying. Chris Davis over here trying to find something else to play until Final oh, Fantasy, God. and we're, and we're all like Hollow Knight. I didn't, Hollow I didn't Knight. Final He's Fantasy. Like, I just figured out what I want to play next. Which oh, is? Let's hear it. I don't this know yet. Be a gym. Oh, I think oh. you said you figured it out. Just no. pick up any random thing. God. Jesus, I'm, there's so much. Yeah, there is. That's the problem. There's so much. What about Dredge or Darkest there Dungeon 2 or something? I mean, there's I've, just been so much this year. What about Woe Long Fine, Fallen Dynasty? I'm probably not going to play that. That's just I mean, not for ouch. me. Chris Davis, you want to borrow my copy just of Woe Long? I'm not going to get to it anytime <laughs> soon. Oh, I should replay, replay Demon Souls for the PS5. I, I would love to, Brad. <laughs> I saw it on yeah. sale on Amazon for thirty dollars today. You want to just go if ahead and buy, buy a new copy? You're the biggest fucking clown, dude! What are you talking about? Just come over to my house. You won't tell me where you live. He lives in a new uh, place now, so uh... yeah, he moved and he refuses to tell us his address. Oh shit! Oh my shit! Goodness. Oh shit! 
wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I know this is getting into the weeds a little bit on the podcast, but Brad, uh, Brad might be coming to look to if, see if he's interested in my old TV. Uh, and no. if you come over, if wait, you come I over, you were bring it to me. <laughs> well, either way, I was gonna say you can come and look if you want to come look at it before you actually commit to buying it. That's totally uh. fine. Whatever. The point is, I'm gonna see you maybe probably this weekend. You give me the game, I'll take it, to Chris Davis. Oh, but that's no fun. Ow. Chris Davis, come see the new house. <laughs> I'd love to. Tell me, give me your address. I'll All come right, we'll by. Figure this out. We'll figure this how, out. How off about the we air. meet up and we do a lunchtime? How about we do that? Uh, because we talk we about Demon Souls. Times. It has been a while, but yeah, we call them dinner times. <laughs> we'll, Whatever. All right, we'll, we'll we'll figure this out. Um, I, I I feel like Nolan has this look in his face, like you motherfuckers are gonna do a dinner time. The, you like, come into dinner time to remove after we move. No, I'll t- I'll totally show up. Well, we were going to Nick, but somebody yeah. had to get COVID. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel really bad about that. By the way, I'm super sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I got all excited when you were like, oh. We might be able to do it like a, a a dinner time or you know just meet it for dinner or something before no one leaves. And then I was like, I guess I can't. I have the COVID. All right. Um, let's wrap up with the four player minute, shall we? Uh, Brad, you want to start us off? Sure. I guess. Go go go. I had a hmm hmm. You know, I was going to hmm. talk about playing the Amnesia demo and uh, the bunker. You told me you were going to do that. Yeah, give me but some good I news, Brad. Talk about this other thing. Oh. Um, dude. So I, I've been talking about Zelda and voice acting for a long time, right? And I was I was envisioning the best way to do it. Now I feel like I've teased this many, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago on the podcast, right? How to get Link to talk. But mm-hmm. I feel like more than ever, the perfect, the perfect setup. Now I can't set up the whole thing, but you know, it starts like a new Zelda game, traditional trailer, like doing some stuff. Maybe, maybe think about like the first trailer we saw for like Tears of the Kingdom, where like Link and Zelda are like kind of going down into the ground or whatever. Maybe going this down. Is, yeah, I, yeah. Mm. No. Um, <laughs> it, but like Link gets into a fight and takes like, like a mortal wound, right? And mm-hmm. like Zelda holding him in her arms. Zink Link Link finally said they merge and become Zink. No, Link finally <laughs> says his Link finally says his first word aloud. Mm-hmm. And as he's dying, he's like princess, and it's like holy shit, Link just talked, but then he dies. and died. <laughs> Zelda picks up the master sword, you know, and now you're playing a Zelda fade fade to black. Finally, the get logo, to play the, the Legend logo. of Zelda. No, the logo comes in. It's Zelda, blank. colon, the legend. Huh? Huh? No, the you lost me at the title. The nah. first game where you play as Zelda, right? Instead of the legend of Zelda, Zelda, the legend. She's no, the legend. What if, She's no. been the legend the whole time. It's the namesake of the series, the first game where you what play if as they Zelda. Called it the, what if they called it the... And talks because he's no longer the silent protagonist. He goes. She goes into hell. What is the what? Is, or she but, goes into hell to to get Link back. Suddenly, yeah. suddenly, and, and the and the trade off that makes Brad go fuck is that now Zelda doesn't talk. Well, that might be kind of cool though, right? To have like a silent protagonist, Zelda. Yeah, I feel like you might you might have to like. Brad's always it. about keeping those women silent, huh? Oh, damn, damn, Brad. Well, know, of course I am. <laughs> uh, damn. <laughs> I don't know. I think it would be cool. If not Zelda the legend, but you know, it always has been her legend, right? Yeah. Um, how about how about just call it the legend, the legend. of Link? Yeah, I was gonna say play Legend as of Link. Zelda. Yeah, that'd be sweet. It, there call we'll call that the sequel to the other thing that's also never gonna happen. It's just <laughs> anyways. Uh, I played the amnesia demo, it's fine. The problem is you didn't really encounter like anything like a monster there was just like a hand popping out of the wall i don't know talk to carlos about it he's really excited about the game there is a lot of mechanics i i I guess what i the conclusion i draw drew is that i played it right after playing the alone in the dark demo and it was sort of just like oh no this is a real horror video game because i didn't get that from playing whatever the fuck alone in the dark was where you just walked around as a little girl 
what I got from that is that this game could be fine or it could be complete shit. There's no way to know from that alone in the dark demo. There really is no way to know. Someone That's says they fair. got massive frog frog wares frog wares energy frog from wear. that game, like from like you know the their Sherlock. You know, I was gonna the, the I was gonna talk city, about- you know, stuff like that. Like I feel like it could easily be like just a of a you, game. You're, but you're totally stealing confident. my thunder here. You're totally oh. stealing my thunder here because I was gonna talk about alone in the dark. But I will say this. You're right. I don't think you can tell much from that Alone in the Dark demo because it's very, very short. It's more of a prologue than a demo because obviously, honest, you're not playing as like the main character. You don't have there's no combat of any, any kind in the demo. It's just kind of like a, a story set up and giving you an idea of what the game look and feels like. Right. And yeah. the thing I took away from that game was that, like, I love the way that game looks. Like, I know that's not saying much. It doesn't speak to the quality of the game. But I was like instantly kind of like really impressed by the way it looked. Um, uh, yeah. Play amnesia. Am, that's why I wanted you to play amnesia, just to be like. Like, here's the problem. I was, I was, I'm already so going to. Confident. I'm already going to play amnesia. I've been excited for amnesia since the day they announced it. No, so, but it's about the comparison. It's not about whether. It's not about convincing you. Well, I knew we you can were talk be about convinced. the comparison. We can talk about the comparison after I play it yeah, next it week gonna, when it comes it, out. It was or? just shocking going from one to the other. It was, that's all. I mean, they're about. they're also going for two very different things. Like yeah. the thing, no, no, there they are two very. Like, there's all different kinds of ways to do horror. The, the, this alone in the dark seems very much kind of like trying to capture the essence of that original of the original alone in the dark game. Um, and amnesia has has always been more about this like really visceral, uh, just kind of like psycho. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Psychological, like messing with you psychologically. And I don't mm-hmm. really think that's what, what Alone in the Dark's going for. It's going for kind of a traditional survival horror, like Resident Evil style experience, telling it kind of a kooky story set in a mansion. Like, you know, hmm. whatever. So you don't know yeah. much about the bunker though, right? I do know a lot about I mean, I I've read some stuff and I've watched all the trailers for it. I I know it's supposed to be more kind of like open ended and and the experience is gonna change from time to time. I don't know a lot of stuff about the moment to moment, but it I was I was pretty sold on it from the first from the moment they talked about kind of the idea. So hmm. I'm gonna play that day one. In fact I'm probably gonna stream it day one and I'll probably stream I'll probably end up yeah. streaming the whole thing like I do most amnesia games. Um, Let's just say alone in the dark I'd like to see some uh, actual gameplay of uh, oh, the absolutely. characters fighting things because I have my suspicions. Yeah, no, I do agree with you on that. I will say the soundtrack on Alone in the Dark sounds like it's going to be fucking killer. <laughs> it was it was really good in my opinion. It's like this like weird like jazz like I, they even had a they even had like a buzzword for it because they re, it, during that like stupid like marketing video they released for it when they announced it's this like, demo like dread jazz or something like that it was or? like yeah it was like dread punk jazz or something i don't even know what the fuck it was dark jazz i don't know what it, it's it's a stupid word for it but man it sounds good i'm pretty i'm excited <laughs> for that for that aspect of it anyways uh nolan why don't you go next all righty my four player minute starts now um I'm just excited to kind of be settling down and kind of getting back into a routine. Don't get me wrong. There's still 20,000 things I need to do um, at my new house, but you know, I'm here now, at least all my stuff's here. Um, And so most of that can just slowly happen over time. Um, Excited to be spending a little more time playing games, playing Zelda, not on handheld on the switch, but actually on a TV. Um, Mm -hmm. It's uh, much more enjoyable on a TV than handheld. Um, and then, uh, you know, just, we've been getting caught up on, you know, we fell behind on so many TV shows, uh, that we were trying to watch, you know, finally finished succession, uh, season four of Barry. Uh, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. Uh, and so, you know, just kind of getting caught up on, on stuff that we have a little more free time. Uh, and yeah, cool. That's it. That's it. That, yeah. That's, that's, that's gotta be a relief. You've been, uh, running around like a chicken with your head cut off for mm-hmm. months, I guess months yep. now m- 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 <laughs> easily. Well, congratulations. I'm glad you're getting settled. Um, Thank you. All right. Uh, Chris Davis. Uh, for my four player minute, I just wanted to go through a little bit more news that uh, was happening this past week, including some news that may be breaking this evening. Um, so, the the whole Summer Games Fest E3, not E3 season, has uh, began 
second, technically last week, but mm -hmm. uh, one of the shows that we didn't talk about was uh, a VR show from uh, Meta, the MetaQuest Gaming mm -hmm. Showcase. Yeah. Um, and there was a bunch of stuff announced there. Uh, not a whole lot of it very interesting, but As I... Asgard's Wrath 2? Well, let me, let me get there. So uh, they did announce the MetaQuest 3 launching this fall for 500 bucks. Five hundred dollars. Um, I've five hundred and of course no price drop on the pro, which is fifteen hundred dollars. Jesus Christ! Yeah, pro, so pro's not that's not made for VR gamers. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that it exists and it it can play these games it offends like, you that it exists. I it it does actually kind of it definitely offends me. Anything over a thousand dollars it offends me. Oh, but a thousand dollars for your index is appropriate. <laughs> Well, my headset wasn't a thousand dollars. It was the combination of the headset, the controllers, and the docking stations that was. $1, I got my $1. Quest Two for two hundred, and that's what matters to me. Yeah, sure, that's good. That that's good for you. I'm glad you like it. Um, but yeah, there was there was a bunch of stuff that was announced. Uh, Nolan might be interested to know that there was a. Uh, I expect you to die. Three was announced. No, that's um, been no, that's that's been announced. There's even but, been a trailer for that before. But the uh, but, the develop. Yeah. The developer for that yeah. Shell Games also announced another project called Silent Slayer Vault of the Vampire. That this sounds like a that's a bad name. It sounds like yeah, it needs more colons. It, it it doesn't it doesn't roll off the tongue well. It's a single player horror game where you where you play as a stealthy vampire slayer. So okay. You had you me know. at Vampire Slayer though. Yeah. Um, and then there was another vampire game, which is Vampire the Masquerade Justice, which was announced. Uh, you're when, you're a that, you're a vampire actual, in Venice. What about actual Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines two? Whatever happened to that? That that doesn't doesn't matter. Matter. We, we, we don't talk about it that. It was never going to be good. It Guys, we live it. We we live in a post Redfall world. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we don't. It, we this don't is that. that was going to be worse than Redfall. Always. Uh, I guess the one cool announcement from the meta thing was that. They're doing a remake of the seventh guest of all things. Um, what is that? That yeah, was a like a, a ninety three uh, FNV puzzle game. It was a it was it was kind of a horror puzzle game that you did uh, with FNV actors and doing your thing. Well, they're remaking that and they're doing the FNV thing again, but they're having the that be volumetric uh, capture of these actors doing these roles. It sounds crazy. What, what I think they're doing is that they're doing 360 video capture. Uh, so they're keeping that visual fidelity of the actors playing their roles throughout the game. Uh, but you're being, you're able to move around them in real time and see them from every single possible. So you're going to uh, be, you're going to be, a v you're basically going to be in VR being able to move around an FMV inside. an yes. FMV. That, That's that weird. sounds kind of cool. <laughs> That sounds kind of cool. It sounds, that, that stuff has existed. I mean, yeah. they've been had those 360 experiences. Yeah, but bullet time from the it's Matrix cool was basically that. Game. They should yeah. do that with porn. Well, they have. They have. Yeah. Uh, but also, what? they they had the they had the audacity to announce an Attack on Titan VR game because people aren't going to be throwing up while they're playing that. Uh, mm. And then for some fucking reason, we're getting a VR port of fucking Bulletstorm. And oh, that yeah, just makes that. me angry. Wow. Yeah, what the fuck? Wait, That's why does random. that make you angry? It's it because random. Fine idea. For one, I don't like Bulletstorm. I don't think that's a good video game. I think that is a game really? that is twice as long as it should have been, and the con it's only notable for it was like, its it was scale like four and its hours writing. Long. Yeah. No, it was like 15, 20 hours. What? Really? It was There's substantial, no man. Somebody it was. Somebody go how long to beat Bulletstorm. Yeah, I don't I'm think that's accurate. I, I, I remember like it hours. being... Way too fucking long. Um, Maybe it's yeah, like 15 to 20 hours to you, but look, I'm how like, how long to beat? How long to beat says seven and a half hours. There okay, it is. Whatever. Well, I, I took longer with it, I guess. I don't know why, but uh, man, you wish it was three hours and it, it felt like it was way too long to me whatever. for what it was. <laughs> but the I just like, okay, stop putting out fucking bullet storm stuff. Either put out a sequel or s just stop. Shit or, or get off the don't. pot. No more bullet maybe, storm. Maybe don't. Like I like I don't think anybody's ever asked for a sequel bullet, to Bulletstorm. Yeah. 
Uh, also, are they putting out a lot of non-mainline Bulletstorm? <laughs> they they did a a remaster re-release like two or three years ago where they added in fucking Duke Nukem. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, that know, was a thing. A lot of remasters. Yeah, uh, but then I, I do think Chris, I do think Chris Davis's point here is that nobody asked for this. Nope, nobody <laughs> asked for this except sequel, people can fly, right? You, Okay. Wait, Chris Davis was one of the, he hated that game. What he just said he hated that game. Oh, Why would he want a sequel to it? Know. Is it my no. turn yet? He still blew my mind when he said he never played Age of Empires. So I'm, that is true. I'm still, that, that, I'm still reeling over here. The the amount of things that I have not played, Brad, would blow your fucking mind. Okay. That's not the point. One of these days we're gonna have a stream in which it's just you and me talking, and you were just gonna start naming games, and I'm gonna I'm tell you whether I played them. Falling or not. on the floor. You well, it'll just be a three-hour no, no. show, and by the end of it, we'll see whether you, you die of an aneurysm or not. Um, and the other thing I wanted to share that was kind of breaking tonight was that uh, it looks like we might get a new Persona project announcement soon. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Uh, it's a like Persona 5. It's one of those Persona 5. No, it's, no, no, it's no. A, We've known about 3 Remake. Well, no, this is not about 3 Remake. This is Persona 5 related. It's a, no. uh, evidently it's Atlas uh, registered... They register a Again. domain for p5t.jp. Uh, so Persona 5T, whatever T stands for. I Jesus personally Christ, hope just... Tactics. Tactics Maybe might be just, cool. Just, just give us done Persona so many 6. Shin Megami Tensei Tactics games. I mean, it, that's not even a new concept. It's, yeah, but I'm just saying. Sure. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll play a fucking Tactics game, but, you know, there's also like for, Devil Survivor and whatever. For yeah, the love I mean, of Christ, sure. just give us Persona 6. Like a... <laughs> No, the, I mean, you know they're working on that. You know they I mean, are. Yeah, of course. Just, sure, but they take course. so long. I mean, five I, doesn't even feel that old. Anymore, I mean, really. five skipped an entire generation. Or is it my turn so. yet? Yes, go. Yes, go. Nolan's still the only person here who remembers how to do an actual four-player minute. All right. Um, like I said, well, my he thunder did a whole VR showcase. I was Brad, just, <laughs> I was dreaming Brad... about a Zelda project, and he gives us a. I mean, hey, mine was. Whatever. Brad, you, like I said, kind of. I was going to talk a little bit about Alone in the Dark here, but I already said my my oh, yeah, my piece on that. that. I will say this: um, I, I I I'm kind of drowning here. I'm a little over. Like I'm really like 2023 is a fantastic year for games. I think there's no question about that at this point. I'm a little. I'm I'm over it. I'm over the release season right now. I am drowning. I I am playing a bunch of games that I don't want to put down. I picked up Street Fighter. Uh, I, I, I am super excited the more I hear about Diablo I'm super excited to finally play a Diablo game uh, Diablo 4 will be my first one and that comes out next week Amnesia the Bunker I think also comes out next week or the week after that That's uh, game which, piece, I'm, I think. which I'm very excited to play like I said I'll probably stream that so that that helps I'll just kind of focus on it uh, when I'm streaming um, and then of course Final Fantasy 16 and, and I would love to have most of my plate cleared <laughs> before Final Fantasy 16 comes out. But obviously, none of the games that I just mentioned, with the exception of maybe Amnesia, are the kind of game that you just play and clear in like two or three sittings, right? Uh, so I'm well, just like... I, Zelda. Yeah, and I, well, I mean, Zelda, I've already kind of... Like, Zelda is just going to have to be one of those things that I'm working on for a long time. I'm gonna, It's going to overlap everything until I'm done with it. Uh, because honestly, I'm, I'm at, I'm just at a point where like I'm on a weeknight, I'm like, I get two hours and a weeknight is like a good night for me to, to play games. It's not really until the weekend that I really get time to sit down and play for like four or five hours if I'm lucky. Um, so a game like Zelda is really unwieldy. Um, but I'm also very, very, very excited, which brings me, I guess I'll talk about Final Fantasy 16 in the sense that like, that's my, that I, I'm, I'm putting a lot of, a lot writing on Final Fantasy 16 as far as fantasy critic goes. I'm super excited about it. The more I re read about it, the more I hear about it, the more excited I get. Um, they seem to have a lot of faith in this project. They're talking about how it's going to be ready to play day one without a day one patch. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and like, talking about Game of Thrones being an inspiration for the story. Like, I'm hearing all these things that, like, that make me really excited. And all the, the early talk from preview events that I've heard was very positive. But man, if this game somehow fucks me on, on the fantasy critic... I will define, cry. Define fuck you, though. Like, how does it break, does that does it, to be for you? If it doesn't break 90, I'm going to be upset. Oh, <laughs> Nick, just... that's that's a big mm. ask, though. I know, I know. But this, this, this is like, this is this is the one, man. If there's anything on my list that's going to break 90, it's going to be this. Uh, I mean, I think... 
look, if it hits 90, we're talking like it's going to be 90. Mm, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I think this could be like a 92 or a 94. What shut up. What happened to 93? Just, just, okay, just shut <laughs> okay. up. Just stop, just stop talking. I don't want to hear it. I'm just, I'm stressing <laughs> out about it. I want reviews to drop. This thing is, this is starting to freak me out. Oh, Look, um, for you, I hope it's the, it scores that high. I really Final do. Fantasy 15 is an 81 on Open Critic, and everybody hates that game. No, they didn't. Not when it first came out. <laughs> just stop. Just stop. Just stop talking. Just, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, Brad. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to, I'm going to say. Fine. With real tears rear real tears will be shed um no they won't stop yes they will i will i will stream it just me crying that's all it's gonna be anyways uh that's all i got that's it for our show tonight guys thank you so much for tuning in thank you for being here nolan it's great to have you back uh i'm glad it's your move, great to be back nick i'm, I'm glad your your move went well and uh uh, also, uh, shout out to Crispy. He's he's not feeling well. He's he's sick today. I hope Crispy feels better soon. Punk ass and sick bitch. Punk sick. ass sick bitch. Don't worry. I was a punk ass sick bitch recently too. So you know. Yeah, you were. It is what it is. Well, um, well, guys, that's well, we're, we're not going to hear the nut. We're not going to hear enough of him tomorrow. Uh, next week, like he's going to yeah, be boisterous yeah. for the first forty-five minutes. He's going to be super excited. I can't actually, I can't uh, crispy fancy critic. Crispy rants are just the best. So I can't wait. Um, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in Fourplayernetwork.com is our website. Check us out. You can find all of our podcast episodes there or on your preferred podcast service, including Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. And of course, most important thing, if you enjoy talking about video games, uh, or anything uh, like pop culture, whatever, music, movies, TV shows, whatever. Make sure you're you're in our Discord at discord.gg slash four player. That's the number four player. We'd love to have you. It's free. Stop into the introductions channel. Say hello. Let us know uh, what you're playing. We'd love to hear from you. It's always great to hear from new folks. Uh, and anyways, uh, I don't know what's going to happen next week. Fuck Diablo talk, Street Fighter talk. I don't fucking know stuff. Summer in, Games in meantime, Fest talk. Summer Games Fest talk. Uh, when is when does that happen? When is that Starfield Direct going to happen? Uh, that's the twelfth, I think. I'll, we'll we'll po- I'll post. I'll, I'll get all that scheduled stuff on our calendar so everybody can reference it if they need it. Um, but anyways, we'll have a lot to talk about next week, I'm sure. So in the meantime, guys, be good to each other. Uh, happy Pride Month, and uh, uh, play video games. Yeah, that's what I usually say. Play video games. We will see you next week. Good night. Starfield 95!